Mr. Hanley, if you'll remember, um, uh, Mr. Land said that he might uh, not be on time for the start of this. Okay. So we're at uh, 7.02. Um, why don't I go ahead and um, call the meeting to order. Um, let me do a, a, a roll call here. Um, Trustee Griffin. Present. Uh, Trustee Zuniga. Present. Uh, Trustee Land, uh, I believe, is planning to join us later. Uh, Trustee Dwyer. Present. And, uh, and I am obviously here. So we have uh, four out of the five. Um, Uh, Superintendent Skelly, could you lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, I will. Let me move my uh, screen back just a little. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. make a few announcements here. Um, we have our Spanish uh, interpreter for the meeting um, this evening, uh, Enrique Montaldo. Uh, for those of you who would like to attend the meeting in Spanish, that option is available to you. Uh, Enrique, would you uh, please communicate that, uh, that for us this evening? Buenas tardes. Tenemos a nuestro intérprete español para la reunión de esta noche. Para aquellos de ustedes que quieran asistir a la reunión en español, esta opción está disponible. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, uh, if, you if you wish to uh, view the closed captions of this meeting, uh, please view the meeting on the, uh, uh, the San Mateo Union High School District Board Meeting YouTube uh, channel. Uh, the link to the YouTube channel can be uh, found on our website. Uh, you may view the captions in English as we live stream our meeting tonight. And you can view the captions in a variety of other languages if you choose to watch after the meeting has ended. Uh, any viewers may request additional accommodations by calling 650-558-2201. I have a few items to report out from uh, closed session. Um, in closed session, under anticipated litigation, the board unanimously approved a tolling agreement with the city of San Bruno in relation to the uh, Crestmore property. Uh, the board, upon the motion of um, Trustee Dwyer and seconded by Trustee Griffin, moved to approve a special ed settlement with a vote of five to nothing. Uh, in closed session, the board, upon a motion of Trustee Dwyer and seconded by Trustee Griffin, moved to approve a stipulated expulsion with a vote of five to nothing. And the board, upon motion of Trustee Dwyer and seconded by Trustee Land, uh, moved to postpone the expulsion hearing of three cases uh, by a vote of five to nothing. Uh, we are also pulling one item from the consent agenda, K7 is being pulled by the staff and is going to be brought back at the uh, May 5th um, meeting. So um, this is a chance for public and governing board comments. Um, this is a public meeting of the San Mateo Union High School District Board of Trustees. If you wish to make a comment about an agenda item or during the public comment section at the beginning of the agenda right now, uh, please use the raised hand feature on Zoom to be recognized when invited to do so by the board president for each item on which you wish to comment. And you will be admitted to speak during your uh, public comment period. Uh, the board president will call on you Please note that comments are limited to three minutes. The board president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comment, depending upon the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. 
At this time, uh, we will take public comments on non-agenda items, on items not on the agenda. Uh, do we have any uh, of those? I believe we do see some raised hands out there. Yes, President Hanley, I will bring in Margo Myman and ask the Youth Ambassadors Program students to please raise their hands as well. I believe they requested to speak at this point in time as well. Okay. Ms. Mayman, I am promoting you in. If you could please accept the invitation. Have you promote all three of them? Okay, uh, I'll go back to Ms. Mayman. Okay, uh, okay, here comes Ms. Margo Mayman. I should clarify my intention was to speak about the mask mandate. So um, is this an appropriate time or should I go? No, that, that will be up on uh, the agenda later on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jack Flasner, I will now promote you. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, First off, thanks for hearing my group mates and I and accommodating our requests about the uh, order. Uh, I'm Jack Flanzer. I'm here with Shayna Blum, Sydney Chen, and Jaden Wan. We're all freshmen at Burlingame High, uh, and we're all participating in the Youth Climate Ambassador Program, which is run through the San Mateo County Office of Sustainability. Uh, in short, the YCA program educates teens about the climate crisis and challenges us to address one of the contributing factors to the issue with a community impact project where you try to make a difference within your community, which is what we're doing now. As a group, we find the plastic utensils and packaging in our school lunches is an issue, and our project is centered around getting our current utensils placed with more sustainable ones. Uh, we've done a large amount of communication with possible partners, coordinators, and the school's uh, nutrition supervisor. Uh, we understand this change might be hard and expensive, but we still believe that it's necessary for the future. Uh, that's all. Uh, next, I think Shana Blum wanted to talk, so. Okay. Okay, Shay, when you're ready. Go ahead. Sorry, one second. Um. So as high school students, we see this change as urgent and necessary because we are aware of the detrimental impact of plastic on the environment. We created a petition to end plastic packaging and utensils and SMUHSD that over 200 students and staff in the district have signed, illustrating that they agree that this change is vital. In recent years, plastic production and incineration have produced more than 850 million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the World Wildlife Fund. As you probably know, greenhouse gas production is leading to global warming, which in turn threatens the existence of life on Earth. Our generation and the next generation of high school students are going to be alive to see the effects of climate change if the crisis continues to escalate at the same rate. However, we are often seen as a group that will end climate change and fix the problems that past generations started. But we cannot make this change alone without the support of adults in positions of power. Sydney Chen. Hey, Sydney. Hi, okay. Um, so, plastic is one of the most dangerous and harmful man made synthetics. Over the years, plastic production has rapidly increased with about 380 million tons of plastic being created each year. Um, plastic is quite damaging to our environment because it often ends up in our waterways, killing marine life, contaminating our water, and overall destroying Earth's natural ecosystems. The longer this continues, the more susceptible wildlife is to extinction. Plastic production and incineration also releases lots of greenhouse gas emissions. Not only does greenhouse gas emissions contribute to the warming planet, but those chemicals are known to cause cancer and liver damage. In addition, impoverished communities or communities of color 
often face the impacts of plastic production. These neighborhoods are littered with plastic and their drinking water is often unsafe to consume. Though it may seem impossible to fix this problem, ending plastic mm -hmm. in school lunches is the first step to making a difference. Um, Jaden, I think it is your turn to speak. Jaden? No. Jaden, when you're ready. All right. Um, so in the past few months, the group and I have thoroughly researched ideas for sustainable foodware, thinking about how we could implement them into the San Mateo Union High School District. Our first idea was biodegradable foodware, which would be implemented through a, uh, through a vendor uh, whose prices suited those of the district. We are also aware of a law called the San Mateo Disposable Food Service Ware Ordinance, which currently supports restaurants and businesses in utilizing sustainable foodware. We're hoping that a similar initiative could be implemented in school settings, smoothening the process of transitioning to biodegradables. The second solution that we developed was the idea of reusable foodware, where we would basically partner with groups such as the nonprofit Plastic Free Restaurants, which subsidizes the costs of reusable foodware to schools and restaurants as long as they replace plastic foodware. In addition, companies such as Dishjoy, which specialize in mobile dishwashing, would allow reusable foodware to really shine in a school environment. After having conversations with Dennis Forrest, the Director of Student Nutrition Services, we collectively concluded that unfortunately, our solutions were out of reach in terms of the school district's current budget. But we hope that in the future, the board will be able to allocate more money towards nutrition services to make our project possible. Through our project, we're trying not only to really reduce San Mateo Union High School District's carbon footprint, but also show people the importance of sustainability in today's modern world. If we don't set a precedent in sustainability for future generations, how can we expect them to solve problems such as climate change? How can we expect them to know what to do? How can we expect them to make a difference if we ourselves can't set the example of doing so? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a floor of Baud. I will now promote for public comment. Floor of Baud, you can unmute and Turn your camera on if you wish and make your comment. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Buenas noches. Ah, no sé si eh, es mi primera vez que estoy en esta reunión. No sé si este, lo que yo diga eh, se puede introducir acá, pero lo voy a decir. Um, eh, I no can, sé que... Perdón, I can translate if that's, or is that okay? Sure. Okay, she said that she doesn't know if everybody can hear her, but, or understand her, but um, she's going to... Um, speak, but the problem is it might, okay, good, the clock stopped. Ajá, síguele. Uh, yo noté que eh, hace un tiempo atrás, antes en todas las escuelas, habían este, un policía que cuidaba las escuelas, uh, y ahora he notado que ya no los han sacado, uh, y yo pienso que deberían volver a ponerlos, porque uh, a veces afuera de las escuelas hay personas que están vendiendo drogas, o como últimamente se están robando los niños, entonces pienso que eh, deberían tomar en cuenta de poner este, policías. Eh, eh, yo creo que lo sacaron porque estaban haciendo cosas indebidas los policías, creo. Sí. Okay. Un momento, perdón, déjeme decir lo mismo primero. Um, she was saying that she knows that beforehand, or originally there had been uh, police officers on campus, on each campus. And she said that she noticed that they were gone and that they should be coming back. They should come back because there are people in the community that sell drugs, that um, are um, hurting children, and that um, she believes that um, that would mitigate that those problems. Um, go ahead. Uh, sígale, por favor. Uh, y entonces, este, escoger unos buenos policías uh, para que cuiden a nuestros niños, a nuestra juventud, que es el porvenir. De este, de este tiempo. Nada más. Gracias. Gracias. She said if we could um, hire some police officers that would be um, 
you know, doing good things for our, our kids. Um, I forgot to mention before she had said that, um, you know, it might have been they were they were removed from the schools because maybe there were things that were happening that were not um, that were not positive with the police officers, but um, that she um, would like to see them come back, but making sure that they're um, that they are um, just positive and um, adequate for our schools. And that's it. Thank you. Gracias, señora. So um, maybe just to jump in here, um, Ms. Abad, um, somebody from our staff will follow up uh, with you. Hay un gente de la Distrito que va a llamarte para hablar más sobre este. ¿Está bien? Gracias. Gracias. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments and uh, thank the students also for uh, for making a uh, very good presentation. Uh, we're, we can't uh, we can't comment in in a substantive way because of the Brown Act on because these are not agenda topics, but uh, we appreciate receiving the comments. Uh, board uh, board comments this evening. Are there. Uh, Board comments. Um, Trustee Zuniga. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everybody. First, I would like to acknowledge the land on which we currently occupy is the traditional territory of the Ramaychush Ohlone people, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. Um, thank you um, for um, all of our staff, to all of our staff and our principals and our teachers and everyone I know, um, there's been a lot of uncertainty and a lot of a lot of difficult times lately. And so um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone um, that, you know, we would love to support you in any way that you need. Um, I also wanted to mention that there are many positions available through um, our district. And so if anybody knows people that are looking for work, that are looking for a great place to work, um, to please um, spread the word. Um, the, there will be a COVID-19 vac vaccination clinic for youth provided by the Peninsula Healthcare District on Saturday, April 30th from 12 to four at St. James Zion Church in San Mateo. You can go to their website to register. Um, also, the Stanford Center for Youth Mental Health and Wellness um, will, it, I guess it's called Alcove. Um, it's a consortium with mental health services for youth as well. And they'll be opening a new site in Cemetery in the fall. So I thought it would be super appropriate for a lot of the things that our students are dealing with right now. Um, the Cemetery youth, County Youth Commission has a immigrant youth scholarship and the deadline is May 1st. You can go to the San Mateo County Youth Commission website to find more information. Um, and let's see, the, the Youth Commission will meet again on Tuesday, April 26th uh, at 5.30 p.m. for anyone that is interested. Um, the ACLU, uh, North Peninsula ACLU, is partnering with Thrive for a candidate forum um, for the sheriff's race, the San Mateo County Sheriff. And they're looking to have more students, student participation. Um, they are looking for, um, you know, comments and just participation from our youth, especially because it's so um, important for that voice. Um, and I would like to recognize our interpreter. Thank you so much for all the great work that you do. And remember everyone, if you need accessibility to plead that there is that, that chance to get some accessibility if you need for our meetings. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Griffin. You know, um, I want to thank the, the uh, students for that presentation. Uh, tomorrow's Earth Day, and I think it's the 50th celebration of Earth Day, which uh, uh, promotes awareness of the, uh, the need for the health of our environment. And I think now we see it's more important than ever and it's an excellent opportunity um, for action like the one we heard earlier uh, regarding elimination of plastic utensils. 
and it's an opportunity for discussions and learning in our, our schools. So, um, you know, we, I, I, I'm sure I can remember the first Earth Day, although I may not, it's maybe foggy, but it, it, I, it's been here 50 years. The other thing that uh, I went to, I went to a um, state controller's office conference on um, uh, audit manuals and compliance reporting for uh, school districts. And there was a fair amount of discussion on, raw, on fraud and risk factors. And it was really, um, it was really very interesting. They had uh, FICMAT people talking about um, things to be aware of. Um, and they focused on student body funds um, a lot. So I'm gonna, at the end of the meeting, I'm gonna ask for a, a report off, you know, on our list on how we watch and control student body funds. So thank you. Okay, Trustee Dwyer. Okay, um, I'm gonna go a little different direction. I, I wanna thank everyone who has participated in our meetings and shared their thoughts and ideas with us. Um, and I, I'm going to reference the masking, um, the, the masking for COVID and all of our COVID precautions. Um, we've received, I, I, I'll, I'm speaking for myself. Um, I cannot absolutely speak for the board, but I appreciate all the people who have written. And I, in the recent weeks, I've received a, a great, a very solid number of emails. And that's so important because we represent you and we want to listen to you, we want to hear you. We want your ideas, we want your experience, we want your knowledge, um, because you may know something I don't. And if you do, I want to follow up on that. And I want to learn from everyone that I can, because that's how we all become better. Um, but I also believe that as a district, we've worked very hard to eliminate bullying in our schools. And I can remember vividly being a young kid being bullied in, in my early education um, and just being shocked by the whole thing and how horrible it felt. Um, and I also, was a, and when I started my career actually as an attorney, um, I ran into some people who were really intent on bullying uh, the younger associates, which I also really felt very off-putting. So when we, we receive, a, I received so many emails and I, and I want to read them and I want to digest them and think about them. But when people write things like worst to the worst, lies, deception, utter incompetence, um, efforts to deceive, refer to our insanity, abuse of power, um, politics, which I can guarantee you, I have no interest in politics, um, and certainly wouldn't play that wouldn't play into my thinking on the um, on the, our mask situation. Um, abuse of power, being called morons, <laughs> I, you know, that's it's very off-putting, and and it really is, and it causes you to stop and not take the the writer as serious as you would if those terms, if all these derogatory terms went in there. If they said, "I want to tell you what I think." Well, I want to hear what you think, but I don't want to be called a moron in the process. The one that really, really got me, though, was being called a retard. Um, I was a special ed teacher before I went to law school, and that's a word that we did not use and that we did not find appropriate in any way. Um, it's a very a terrible word because you're, the level of intelligence you're born with, your abilities you're born with, you're born with. And I, I, find, I, I found that word particularly egregious. So I just ask that as we go forward, that please, when you're right, and it, I guess particularly to me, um, share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your knowledge, share your wisdom. I'm, I'm open and I, I want to know what you know that I may not know, because I think it's really important because I represent you. But if you cannot, if you could just leave out the derogatory terms, I, I will spend much more time with what you wrote and I will really take everything as even more seriously than I do anyway. But um, anyway, thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, yeah. I, I think uh, Mr. Land wants to speak. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so first of all, I want to apologize. I am driving to Southern California for a field trip for my school. My uh, students are participating in a comp music competition at Disneyland, and I'm very proud to be part of it. Unfortunately, that means I am having to do this drive, and uh, I apologize. Um, second, I uh, definitely have read a lot of those emails as well. 
Um, I understand where uh, Linda is coming, uh, Trustee Dwyer is coming from. Um, it is unfortunate that people choose the words that they do, um, but I do appreciate everyone sending us emails so that we can make an informed decision. Um, the last thing I want to say is I was a participant in uh, our San Mateo, uh, San Mateo School Boards Association meeting uh, at the County Office of Education last week. Uh, we had a dinner and a presentation by several uh, school districts to learn and get insight into things that they're doing that is quite innovative. Um, the county talked about the teacher residency program that several school districts are participating and I know we are going to be participating next year. Um, I'm glad to say that was a, a great presentation. Uh, we also heard from Jefferson Union High School District about their teacher housing and staff housing. It was quite incredible and I'm hoping that we can follow suit as soon as we can resolve the issue with the sale of Crestmore. Um, the third one was very from the Ravenswood School District. They uh, talked a little bit about um, a different evaluation system for teachers um, and also how they can increase raises in a certain way and, in, and have an informal feedback system that was uh, brought together by everyone in, in, the, in their district, including their union, which I thought was amazing. Um, so anyway, this was a very worthwhile uh, situation I hope to share with our staff and just thank you. For, and I will probably turn off my screen so that, in my, so that you don't have to see me driving. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, um, I second uh, Trustee Dwyer's uh, sentiments. Um, yeah, I think we have to be careful about um, getting extreme on, um, on comments and um, and how we communicate, I think there's there's been a a general breakdown in the level of civic discourse in the in the country overall, and I think everywhere. and And I don't think it's particularly helpful in trying to formulate public policy. And I don't think we've benefited from it in um, broadly or specifically. Uh, uh, locally. So I would encourage people to certainly share their knowledge and share their views, um, but uh, be careful how you do it. Um, I want to bring the community up to date um, on uh, the superintendent search, uh, which is which is on schedule. Um, uh, people uh, who are here fairly regularly or follow us regularly may know that Leadership Associates was chosen by the board as the search firm to, um, to help us uh, find and recruit uh, candidates for, um, for um, um, the superintendent uh, vacancy that we will have um, in June, at the end of June. And, uh, and they have... Um, uh, been conducting, they conducted in, in March a very comprehensive uh, input gathering uh, from the community. Uh, we got um, over 80 people participated in in-person um, events that, that Leadership associate, Associates um, convened uh, here in, in the district, and we did a, a, a community-wide um, event that we advertised very uh, extensively in the Daily Journal. Uh, that was attended well. And we received um, uh, 1,450 surveys back, which, uh, which I think is, uh, is incredible response. Um, and the board is, um, I think, very appreciative of that. They gave us a lot of input um, as we um, uh, we're moving this process forward. Uh, the, um, the vacancy closed, the advertisement for um, uh, applications closed at the end of March. Uh, the board met last week to review candidates. Leadership had uh, vetted uh, all of the applicants, uh, made some recommendations to us. We uh, reviewed the the recommendations reviewed the applicants um, and we'll be uh, interviewing some people 
uh, next week. So I anticipate that the board will um, will make a choice in the next uh, uh, very short period of time uh, in the coming couple of weeks. Um, uh, but we are we are on schedule with the process and it's moving forward. And we very much appreciate um, all of the uh, the input that um, that the community and um, and everybody in the district provided to us. It's been very helpful. So uh, moving to the next item, we had no uh, no communication to the Board of Trustees. Um, recognition this week, this uh, meeting is the Autism uh, Awareness Month. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Um, so yes, we bring this, uh, this is April is uh, um, Autism Acceptance Month. Um, I think uh, we've put together a resolution here, here for you um, uh, to consider. Um, and I call your attention to the last whereas, which says that Autism Acceptance Month offers everyone opportunities to build better awareness of the signs, symptoms, and realities of autism, including information and resources for communities to become more aware of autism, promote acceptance, and be more inclusive in everyday life. Um, I think that uh, there's been many studies, um, particularly um, I remember a study um, in The Economist magazine about the tremendous um, skills that many autism uh, folks on the autism spectrum uh, disorder have and their possibilities for um, making contributions to, uh, to, um, to our society that often go uh, unrecognized and underappreciated. So um, we're pleased to bring this to you and we, um, we uh, hope you're, you're pleased to uh, see it here. Thank you. You want them to vote? Yeah, we need a motion and a second to approve this resolution. I'd make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay. I think I moved and Greg seconded. Okay. Well, I'll go I'll go with that. Uh, we have a motion from uh, Trustee Dwyer and a second from Trustee Land um, to uh, to approve this resolution. Uh, Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Trustee Zuniga? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Trustee Land? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Trustee Dwyer? Absolutely, yes. And I vote absolutely yes also. So the motion uh, and the resolution pass uh, five to nothing. So moving on to um, consent agenda. That we are pulling uh, K7, uh, the field trip for uh, Burlingame High School. That will be brought back on, um, on May 5th uh, for consideration. Um, that's being pulled at the staff's request. Um, does anyone want, wish to uh, pull uh, any other item from the consent agenda? I Is move there... approval of the consent agenda. Okay. I'll second. second. <laughs> I think uh, Trustee Zuniga beat you by a, an eyelash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a, uh, a motion by Trustee Dwyer and a second by Trustee Zuniga. Um, Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Uh, Trustee Land? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. And I vote yes also. So uh, consent is approved uh, five to nothing. So regular reports, uh, report of the superintendent. Um, thank you very much, uh, President Hanley. Um, it's an exciting time of the year. Uh, May is, uh, April's winding down. Uh, we're soon enter the 100 days of May um, as the school year um, comes to a close. Um, I am really enjoying myself. I've had a chance to see many different activities um, that are uh, associated with uh, the end of the year, plays, other activities, time at school, uh, watching softball games. Um, I had a chance to see uh, uh, Mills' uh, Footloose uh, last Saturday night, wonderful uh, play 
Tomorrow night, I'm going to Mateo Motion uh, over at uh, San Mateo. There are many activities coming uh, on all of our campuses involving uh, various things. And uh, it's just a really exciting time in the spring here. We've had more rain and sort of cloudy weather, but uh, it's going to be a great May. And uh, our kids are really enjoying themselves. And, uh, students are working hard, all those uh, good things. Um, the uh, uh, on Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 26th, is our uh, final uh, third um, of the year uh, Unity in the Community convening. Um, it's from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Um, the student leader uh, co-host is Terry Wong, who's uh, currently attending uh, UC Davis. Um, we'll hear uh, from Samia Showman and others on ethnic studies, and Lindsay Bussey will provide an update on the district's uh, bulletin on bullying, hazing, discrimination, and hate motivated hate motivated behaviors. We're pleased to uh, do these activities in conjunction with the Black Parents Association, um, who have been great supporters and been a catalyst for uh, community in our district for for uh, some thirty some years. Um, so the information, more information on attending has been sent out to uh, our community and is available on our district website. Um, the week of May 5th is a bus driver appreciation uh, week. We'll bring something to you uh, in terms of recognitions uh, that night. And Dr. Wade is in charge of special education and uh, uh, who interacts often with the uh, transportation department uh, as they uh, serve our, um, our students with IEPs. Um, so we're looking forward to thanking them for their, um, their hard work. Um, I want to uh, mention that uh, this is the 52nd uh, Earth, uh, Earth Day, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Griffin. I'm sure you still remember the, the first one, even though it's two years uh, further back than you, uh, than you remember. Um, I'm excited. Uh, on uh, Saturday, we have a bike-o-rama over at uh, Hillsdale, uh, my bike needs some tuning up and they've promised to, uh, to do that uh, at that day. If you have extra bikes that uh, you're not using, this is, uh, I can't think of a better way to both uh, create uh, reuse of material and, um, and then also to provide uh, students at need um, of the chance to bike instead of uh, walk and run the risk of being late to school or heaven forbid, uh, drive to uh, school or have your parent drive. So um, the, the, uh, the students did a nice job today talking about uh, the, um, uh, the efforts to uh, do things around our, um, our um, materials in the food services department. Um, the committee this year, um, had the sustainability committee uh, and the site sustainability reps, as well as students have been talking about a whole variety of different issues this year. Um, uh, Mr. Hawkins has been part of those discussions as the uh, chief business officer. His department uh, is responsible for a lot of our carbon footprint, and I really appreciate his uh, participation in there, his ideas and his commitment uh, to uh, sustainability. And we've done a lot of different things. The pandemic has set us back some in terms of uh, the obvious need to increase ventilation and increase uh, airflow. Uh, but I think we're still doing very well. And our students and staff have really upped their um, the ability to recycle and um, create uh, opportunities um, for, for that to, um, to happen. And then we're also, as you know, um, working on uh, more solar um, activities and we'll be, um, we'll be bringing those to you uh, uh, shortly. Um, and then finally, I want to take this uh, this uh, opportunity to introduce um, uh, someone who you approved at the last uh, board meeting um, to be um, the assistant an assistant principal at uh, Aragon High School uh, next year. This is uh, Mr. Andrew Harding. Uh, Mr. Harding has served um, at, for I think it's 18 years as a teacher at uh, Hillsdale. Uh, he could tell you more. He's an English teacher. Um, I got to know him uh, a lot last year because he was a regular at the uh, office hours that we held um, during the height of COVID to communicate and gather uh, input from staff. Um, he uh, also uh, visited him in his classroom, talked, you know, to share, you know, it was a short conversation and I shared uh, 
my, all my wisdom about being a, a school administrator. Uh, he took copious notes there, uh, which was very polite of him. Um, and uh, uh, I learned that uh, he's, he runs a jam session for students in his classroom who uh, may or may not be in the music program, but, but seek uh, a, a place to uh, to uh, share their passions. Um, wonderful community person. I know he's just going to do a fantastic job uh, at Aragon as an assistant principal, and we're really excited to have him join us here. Uh, Andrew, maybe you could say a few words about yourself. I I don't think you got the memo about uh, asking the rest of your family uh, to come here and so we could uh, have a look at them and thank them for uh, allowing you to uh, devote so much time to the district, but uh, we'll thank them in advance for that. But uh, maybe you could share a little bit about your excitement and what you've done um, in the district so far. All right, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Good evening, Dr. Skelly, Dr. Kempke, members of the boards of trustees, staff, students, family, and other community members. Uh, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight and briefly introduce myself. This is actually the first time that I have spoken before the board, so um, it's a, a great honor. Um, uh, personally, uh, you mentioned my family. They're actually sitting here eating dinner right now. Um, I've got I've got three teenagers across two districts, uh, Jefferson Union and uh, Pacifica School District. My wife is a humanities teacher at Oceana uh, in Jefferson Union as well. And um, we are uh, a family steeped in education. I think um, rarely is there an evening where we're not talking about education, schools, districts, educational reform. Um, as Dr. Skelly mentioned, um, some of my personal interest music, um, I helped to start a jam club at Hillsdale High School, but I have a, a personal interest in music, in reading and poetry um, because I've taught English. Um, 18 years, it feels like it has only been 18, but it's actually been 21 years at Hillsdale High School, uh, my very first school. And um, since that time, um, I was one of the first teachers in the SLC program at Hillsdale. So helping to pilot the SLCs there uh, in my third year of teaching. Um, there I've been a house leader, site council member, department chair, instructional coach. Uh, I've worked with the association as a legislative council member and the last two years as building president for Hillsdale. Um, my desire to move into administration was really inspired by the great mentoring that I had by the administrators that I worked under. Um, I think there's really no greater testament to the talent uh, and the professionalism of the individuals we have in this district that uh, they were an inspiration and really uh, lead by example. Um, and as a part of that, my goal through everything that I've done is really to serve the community, to serve teachers, serve students, and I look forward to continuing that role. Uh, as hard as it is to leave Hillsdale after two decades, um, I am excited, excited to be joining the awesome teaching and administrative team at Aragon. So I know you'll bring uh, some things uh, from Hillsdale to your experience at Aragon, but one of those will not be uh, your wardrobe. Um, so perhaps you can uh, uh, recycle those and uh, uh, get yourself some Aragon swag when you go over there. Uh, we, don't, we want you to start off on a good foot. Um, that's the end of my report. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have a student board member this evening? We do not, President Hanley. Okay. Um, how about the District Teachers Association? Mr. Childress? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, President Haley, members of the board, uh, District Cabinet. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate um, Andrew and uh, the other administrative appointments that are before you this evening. Um, I look forward to working with them uh, in, in, in my capacity as, as a representative and also a uh, colleague uh, in the um, the mission to, to do what's best for students in this district. Um, the, the first thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is um, the masking, uh, the masking protocol discussion that, that will come before you shortly. Uh, uh, in, in anticipation of this, this meeting, uh, and, and as with, with your discussion on March 10th, um, I, I specified, you know, pretty much unequivocally that that I didn't want to take a side. I shared with you the 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 membership the membership's wishes and the membership's input and intent on masking, um, and I I implored you to make a thoughtful and informed decision, and I believe that you did, and I commend you for that. 
the I, I because this, this was going to be revisited today, I decided to survey the membership again. And interestingly enough, the numbers came out almost exactly the same. It was 71% are in favor of keeping the mask mandate uh, moving forward and possibly through the end of the school year. Uh, that was the question I asked. Um, there were some more, there was, there was a lot of nuanced discussion and I asked for extensive comments and I really appreciated some of our members' thoughtful comments uh, that were both um, supportive and, and uh, contradictory to uh, maintaining the masking protocol, uh, all, all of which were uh, thoughtful and, and um, just genuine. Um, comments from the like of, of saying that, you know, students have, have, have lost so much time um, you know, we really need to maintain uh, the safety of our, of, of our campuses uh, so that we don't have any more quarantine times. As we approach finals, why do we want to have students uh, missing uh, final exams or AP tests or graduation? Um, to the other end of the spectrum of, you know, I haven't seen their faces for so long. Um, I really want to make sure that I understand that uh, students are excited about learning or engaged. So it really does run the gamut, but, but ultimately the, the membership did vote in favor of keeping the mask mandate 70 to 30. Uh, and that's with well over 75% of our membership responding. Um, the, the, the other thing I'll talk about, and, and I'll just insert this here, uh, I wanna piggyback on what trustee Dwyer said, uh, as well as a couple of other trustees who had uh, commented as well, that the, the, sometimes as leaders and representatives, we uh, ask for information, we ask for input and we gather information. And unfortunately, the vitri sometimes the vitriol of, of personal opinion and personal agendas uh, come through and are certainly counterproductive. Um, for those of you in the education profession, you know, you know, it, it's akin to, you know, a closed mindset or a discourse one discussion versus a discourse two discussion or a growth mindset. Um, and it really is in all of our best interests to try and collaboratively solve problems and collaboratively look at things. Because ultimately we're all representatives, we're all representing um, our respective groups uh, in the mission of providing uh, the best opportunity for students in the art community. Um, the, the, the last thing I'll say is um, we've, we're, 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 we're winding down at the end of the year and, um, but on, on the negotiation side, we're sort of ramping up, uh, looking forward to uh, the two bargaining dates that we have scheduled Monday and Friday of next week um, and hoping that we can find some common ground. Uh, the district revenue is looking quite well compared to last year at 6.3% AV growth. And so we're looking forward to having a productive discussion. We've exchanged some proposals, we've exchanged some ideas, and we're looking forward to um, a productive discussion and hopefully uh, a, a, a solid preparation for next year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, report of the CSEA Chapter 519 representative. Yes, I've been trying to promote Mr. Brock. Um, I do have Ms. Brown here from the adult school. If we'd like to start with her and I'll see if Mr. Brock will accept the invitation. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, President Hanley, members of the board, Dr. Skelly, Dr. Kemke. Um, my name is Patricia Brown and I am the um, ESL program coordinator at San Mateo Adult School. And um, I'm here representing our teachers local. And I just want to give you a couple of highlights about the adult school because we are here and we are uh, in action just like everybody else is. We're winding down as well. Uh, next week is our spring break. And um, tomorrow evening, we have our third uh, ESL graduation. Um, we're very excited about this. We're going to have it in person and we have 15 graduates. And what that means is they're graduating from our ESL program, which means that they are proficient in uh, communication and language, uh, in reading and writing and speaking in comprehension and ready to go either on to 
higher education to go on to another career or to some other involvement in, in the community. So we're really excited that we've, we've developed more of a, of, a, of a transition of our ESL students who've achieved what they need to achieve and we're kind of like pushing them out of the nest of the adult school. Uh, also, uh, another highlight is that we have been working with College of San Mateo for the last few years and we've just tweaked and rearranged uh, an exam that we give to any students, any of our adult um, ESL students who want to um, transition to College of San Mateo. So we've just been working with them and so as a result of that, uh, we're we have a warm handoff uh, and extra support for our students going from the adult school to the College of San Mateo. And they just had a tour there and they will have priority registration. Um, so um, also the other thing that's just been going on here for the last two weeks, we've just had a marathon of registration and orientation and tech orientation for our summer session. So we've, we've had it in person, uh, it's a two day process. Not, not all day, but like a few hours each day. Day number one is assessment in uh, speaking, in reading, in writing. And day two is a technology um, kind of boot camp to, to prepare our students to uh, be able to get classes in a hybrid form, which we're still doing through the summer. And um, we registered uh, around 400 new students. The majority of them are at our lower levels of English. I'm just talking about ESL right now, because that's my thing. But we just registered about 400 new ESL students and we have a big influx of lower level students. Um, and so it's a big challenge to find enough uh, instructors and we're working hard to do that. And we're trying some creative ideas to accommodate as many students as we can so that we don't leave anybody hanging out there. Um, and uh, in order to do that, I just want to give a shout out to doing this kind of um, an assessment, which involves verbal interviews, it involves a computerized reading test, it involves reviewing student writing, is that to do this takes so much energy and time. And we have an amazing, amazing classified staff here at the adult school, and they've all worked so hard to, to figure out a system of where we can interview students and try to help them guide them through this process so that we can place them in one of our seven levels of English as a second language. And uh, not to leave out career education, uh, we do have a new program that we're starting this summer, a new class, uh, which is medical technology, I'm sorry, medical terminology. And the reason it's really exciting, it's the first time that we're offering something that's a model of, of partnering an ESL instructor with a content instructor. And so it's to, it, this is a, available to our, stu, to our ESL students, kind of an intermediate and above. And whereas the language might be normally, this type of class might be a little bit challenging. We have an ESL instructor working together with the instructor for medical terminology. And hopefully by doing this, we're going to be able to prepare more students to have an opportunity to get work in this field. And last but not least, so I haven't spoken ever to this board on uh, Zoom and I haven't spoken in person in a really long time. So I wanted to be the uh, person also this time because maybe it's my last time. I'm also retiring um, uh, at the end of this uh, summer and I have been at the adult school for almost 26 years. The last, uh, the first many, many years as an ESL teacher, teaching every level uh, and for the last three years, I've been the program coordinator, and it's been a real interesting and uh, learning experience and a real challenge. But I just and I just uh, and we have just uh, um, selected an, a replacement for my position, Lisa Sparks, who's been in our school for 15 years as well. And um, I'm very excited for her to take over this daunting position of trying to shepherd and. Uh, 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 herd cats in the ESL department and to be a, a contributor to all to our whole school and she's going to do an amazing job. Um, but I just said uh, my last word on this is just to say that it's been an, inc it, an amazing honor to me to work in adult education. Um, it's, it's kind of a misunderstood and sometimes overlooked special place in education and we're we're in the K-12 system, but nobody knows what we are. They think we're they think we're a high school or they think we're a college, but we're neither. Uh, we're a special place and our goal is to um, 
give people a second chance or a first chance if it's uh, learning the language. And uh, we serve people 18 through, I have had several students in their late 80s. Uh, so we have no upper limit to our uh, age of students that we serve. And um, it's just been an amazing career for me. I've enjoyed it so much. Um, and also appreciate the support that this district has given to this jewel of an adult school that you have right here in the midst of you. Um, many adult schools have not been so fortunate and have really lost a lot of their um, ability to survive. And we're not only surviving, but we are growing, especially in our career education. So anyway, thank you. Thank you all. And uh, thank you for hearing a few words from me. So see you guys later. Bye. Thank you. So uh, I think uh, CSEA, you're uh, you're you're up. Hello, thank you, everybody. Sorry, I'm having I'm having some technical difficulties here with my computer. Um, anyways, uh, good evening, President Hanley, Dr. Skelly, members of the board, and everyone here tonight. I'm Jim Brock, our chapter president. With about five weeks left of the school year, we would like to recognize the hard work our classified staff has done in adjusting to all the changes in our district taking on new responsibilities within their roles, as well as support to all of our students' district. There are a lot of announcements this spring, ranging from retirements to taking on new positions within the district to making fresh starts. We are glad to see the district searching for the best possible candidates for the open positions internally and externally. And please keep us informed and part of the process. Some news from our reclass team, which is two classified members and two district employees, they have completed a review of the accounting department position and presented their findings to Dr. Skelly for review. Thank you to the reclass team for your time and dedication to this review that is above and beyond your regular work duties. Dr. Skelly, please let us know if there are any corrections. If not, we hope your it has your approval for the board to review. In other news, the CSCA and the district have agreed to four professional development days next year. Some of our members have expressed interest in continuing the important work and conversations surrounding equity for our students. We also feel time spent in job alike or interdistrict cross training would support collaboration within the classifications as a whole, encouraging idea sharing and finding the best practices within our district. As always, we appreciate the district support and want to continue to build on that relationship. Thank you and we will see you next month. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. So uh, let's move to special reports and appearances. Um, M1 is the uh, mask uh, mandate up direction. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Uh, Hanley. Uh, what I propose we do here is uh, we'll go through our presentation. Uh, perhaps you take questions or, or no, well, first you can ask clarifying questions perhaps. And then we hear from the public and then you guys uh, discuss it. Does that make sense? That's typically how we handle events. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the way we've often done it. I think that makes sense. Okay, all right. Um, this is a short presentation. We're not gonna spend um, a whole bunch of time going through it. Um, the board has seen this, uh, um, this item and it's on uh, the district website. So um, it's April 21st, um, back on March 10th, you um, asked us to, uh, come back at this meeting. Um, so we would review the mask uh, mandate and uh, talk a little bit about where COVID cases were at this point. So next slide. So um, since the board meeting, um, there was a sharp decline in COVID cases in the county, uh, but now the cases are uh, on the rise again. Although it's uh, fortunately it's relatively slowly. Um, we are currently experiencing a high number of COVID cases after the San Mateo High School prom. Um, there, um, we treated uh, the, um, the prom as much as we have uh, outdoor activities best and, it, and basketball games and other activities like that where we, we have allowed, certainly kids can wear masks, but we've made them um, uh, strongly recommended. So at this event, uh, many of the students um, did not wear uh, masks for this. And as a result, we've seen nearly 90 positive cases uh, involving those students um, who attended the event. You'll see some of the actual data uh, that's taken place the past few years. Um, uh, outbreak, if you will, of this uh, size 
um, piqued the interest of uh, California Department of Public Health. And um, uh, we, staff met uh, specifically Sarah Devaney, um, who's uh, on this uh, call here, um, it met with uh, the California Department of Public Health medical officer and a virologist who is somebody who studies viruses. Um, and uh, they recommended that we maintain masks for the next several weeks. Um, so um, I want to talk about the it's interesting uh, because we had uh, both the San Mateo High School um, uh, pr uh, senior ball and our prom, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, on the same nights, the San, uh, San Mateo and the Aragon uh, event, same night. Um, at Aragon, they um, tested um, uh, far more in the days uh, preceding um, the event. And they also um, looked at students who'd been out of school um, the, the days right before um, the prom and insisted that those students um, test. Um, they required masks um, during that event. Um, and then the other thing that we've learned is that they're like usual at, at uh, senior um, at, uh, at the proms, there are after parties and other um, activities. And there was a, a fairly large one um, that involved San Mateo High School uh, um, uh, uh, um, students. Um, so, um, and then the, the facilities um, that, the, that the kids used um, both were in the city, but uh, have different architecture and different spaces. And so um, it'll be interesting to see what uh, the California Department of Public Health um, finds out. They've been interested in seeing um, the um, positive cases and looking at the specific virus um, to check, uh, you know, what what variant might be present, uh, what's going on there. Um, I should say that uh, we, we're not hearing um, reports of any of our students being particularly sick. Um, you know, they, they uh, are making quick recovery or any sort of uh, larger um, spread there. If you go to the next slide. Um, this is our COVID dashboard. Um, it gives you a feel for um, what's happening with cases in our uh, county. Um, what you'll see here is that uh, um, uh, San Mateo uh, accounts for um, uh, the vast majority of our um, cases uh, that have happened in the last few weeks. Um, uh, Ms. Devaney uh, reports to me that we've um, that we're seeing um, a decline back to uh, lower numbers. We're anxious to see uh, what the results look like um, on April 25th um, and going forward. Um, so, so the numbers are, are fairly um, steady at, uh, at most of the schools, um, just, uh, except for um, at San Mateo. But um, if you, as in our conversations, um, no district does as good a job of, uh, you know, tracking the COVID cases uh, as we do in, in this district. But we are, the anecdotal information that we're hearing from other districts is that they're seeing uh, small increases in their COVID uh, cases since going uh, to mass strongly recommended in mid-March. So, um, you know, we have this outlier that involves the uh, San Mateo High School campus. Uh, many of those students uh, who were involved were at the prom. Um, our, our data, um, doesn't show uh, uh, big increases besides that. And overall in the county, we're seeing um, slight increases and an R of slightly over one, which means cases um, are growing a little bit. So um, the next slide, please. Um, so um, let's see, did I, I think I, there may be next slide after this. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, okay good. All right. so. Um, uh, what are we doing um, now? Well, with, at San Mateo High School, um, we've got uh, significantly more testing uh, going on. We've uh, added, we've moved our health aides around to help the site uh, with testing and case follow-up. We're offering testing uh, much more often, and students are, are taking up with us, us on this. Um, this Saturday, we have uh, the Hillsdale High School prom. Um, that will take place uh, in the same uh, location as Aragon had their, um, their senior ball. I was at, uh, at their, their, I keep saying senior ball, but prom um, is at the same place, um, the Galleria in San Francisco. Um, we are expecting students to mask indoors uh, if they attend or everybody who attends, including um, chaperones. Um, th this facility does have um, quite, uh, it has uh, outdoor spaces that students can go to uh, to take uh, off their masks. 
Um, we are requiring testing uh, this week for our students and guests, uh, guests from other schools. And the testing is taking place Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And students are, are participating in this. They want to be at the event. Um, and we want to slow down the, uh, the spread of the virus here. Um, we've got uh, critical activities that are coming up. Um, missing school now is not, a, uh, it is not good. Um, you know, we've got upperclassmen at these events. And they have some of the some very meaningful activities uh, coming up. Um, so we want to make sure that students are able to participate um, in these activities um, as we move closer to graduation. So at uh, Hillsdale, for just an example, um, their Night Moves event, which is uh, the culmination of uh, their very large dance program, um, happens in uh, in two weeks. There are plays that are happening at all of our schools. There are spring sports and playoffs. And then also AP advanced placement tests that students have to sit for. Um, so we want to um, finish the year uh, strongly. Um, and then it, just to share a little bit about what happened, what happens when we have these kinds of, when we have an outbreak like this, and we haven't had any except for this one that we can really point to, um, that this has disrupted the sports, um, the spring sports. Um, the students uh, had to uh, uh, postpone the uh, play uh, that was uh, scheduled for last weekend, um, and uh, that will be rescheduled. And then many, of, some of the kids who are in Mateo moves, um, which will happen tomorrow and uh, Saturday, um, will not be able to participate, which is a, a disappointment, I know, um, for those students. So where are we um, now? Um, so we, uh, we uh, as staff, recommend... Uh, that we continue the mask mandate uh, for students and staff indoors in our schools for the next two weeks. Um, you know, I'm not a health expert and the recommendations we've brought to you um, are based on what we hear from uh, CDPH about this. Um, and so uh, their recommendation is that we take these next two weeks to look at cases, to make sure we don't have any uh, further outbreaks um, and that, uh, then in two weeks, uh, on May 5th, when the board meets again, if there are no more outbreaks and cases are declining in our schools and in the county, we recommend that the board uh, follow state guidance, guidance to make uh, uh, masks strongly recommended indoors at our schools and during uh, activities. Um, so uh, just a couple of other comments to add to this in, in, as I conclude my comments here. Um, uh, an issue was brought up about mask bullying at the uh, last meeting and staff went back and thought about that and then also consulted other schools. We're really not seeing any of that uh, go on and we're not particularly worried um, for a lot of reasons, uh, not least of which is the character of our, of our students. Um, we have students now who wear masks outdoors. We have students now that wear uh, masks uh, when participating in activities. Um, the, those are choices that students make and uh, and um, they have the option outdoors to do that. And we don't see any sort of uh, uh, peer pressure or, or anything like that, either to wear a mask or to not wear a mask. And I think that's been the experience um, of other districts. Um, I, I want to see us um, uh, go to mask uh, strongly recommended. Um, you know, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, I understand CDPH's concerns, but I, I was disappointed that, you know, when we came to this meeting that we're not in a, in what I think is a situation in which we can go to a uh, mass strongly recommended at this point. Um, if there are uh, students and, and staff and folks, as as uh, as um, um, Mr. Childers mentioned, who are anxious to to see students' uh, faces. And, and we're anxious to, to give that opportunity for students who, who wish to do that. Um, so this is a, rec it's in a reluctant recommendation, um, if you will. Um, we need, um, we, I think we really need to have a point in this year where students have this option. Um, we uh, will have summer, and then we will have next school year. And psychologically, if you remember last year, um, it was really important, I think, to get staff and students back on campus. And that was because they'd been away from school for so long. 
I think that's analogous to the situation we find ourselves in now where we haven't had students without masks for so long. And as we think about staff and students going into the summer and next year, they need to be in a situation um, in which um, masks um, have been taken off. Other districts have seen that, have had uh, a mask uh, strongly recommended policy for quite some time, and they haven't seen uh, you know, uh, dramatic increases in their cases. And I'm confident that the combination of our ventilation system, our tracking system, our testing system, that we can uh, uh, match or exceed the uh, the situations in other districts um, in this regard. Um, so this is a psychological decision, and I, I think we need to prepare our community for the, the strong likelihood that on the 5th, we're going to come back and say that masks are, are strongly recommended as opposed uh, to, uh, to mandated. I realize that this is a big issue uh, for some people. Um, I, I want to say that when the board made the decision to, um, to keep the mask, mask mandate, students accepted that decision and they went about their business and they continued to work. And yes, there were students uh, who protested against this, but by and large, th those students handled themselves well. They did what they, you know, they made their point, they exercised their free speech. Uh, and then they went back to, uh, to, to, to good learning in the last four weeks. Um, I, I think we've seen students be remarkably cooperative. When you hear about what's going on in other places, our students have accepted um, this. They may not have agreed with it, but they, um, they have been about the business of uh, doing the work and being um, um, super students this, this, uh, this school year. Um, I, um, as I said, I recognize this is a big issue, but having gone to the Aragon dance, um, those students had a great time. Uh, I didn't, the students as they left, they were really thrilled to be with their friends and have this activity. Um, as I talked to uh, folks who went to the San Mateo High School, they had a really good experience uh, as well. And they loved the prom and they wanted to have those activities. And we've been committed all along to strong extracurricular activities and have given students those opportunities. Yes, some of them are disappointed that, uh, that uh, they, got COVID from that experience, but I don't think they would trade in their experience at the prom for um, for their case of COVID. They're just so keen on having those opportunities uh, for students. So, um, so I, I think this is an important decision and you'll spend some time on it, but I think we need to keep it in perspective. The kids will be fine. They, they, they uh, by and large, are not nearly as worked up um, at, about this issue as um, as we might think they they are, or based on uh, the emails that we get, both pro and, and con, um, this this issue has taken on um, a uh, you know a, a lot of fervor. Um, but in fact, I think it, it we are operating as a school district in a way um, where this is yes, it's an annoyance to wear a mask. I, I don't enjoy wearing a mask, but um, I, I feel like. Um, we are still operating as a district at a very, very high level, and it hasn't taken anything away um, from uh, comparing us to any other other district on that. Um, so, uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the fact that so many kids in our community have uh, been vaccinated and have gotten boosters, um, that certainly contributed undoubtedly to the fact that this wasn't uh, a case where lots of students got sick, but it has been disruptive um, to students um, as we go forward. So I hope that you'll, uh, and, and I think, our, I hope our public will um, stay patient with us um, as we wait two more weeks um, uh, to do this. Um, I'm confident that the number of, of cases will go down and that on the 5th, um, this will be a fairly short discussion, and uh, hopefully we can uh, move to uh, mass strongly recommended at that meeting. So that's the end of uh, my um, my presentation. I want to uh, thank uh, Sarah Devaney, who I think is um, on this call. Um, she's uh, uh, available to answer um, any uh, hard questions that you have um, here. And uh, with that, I'll stop talking and turn it back over to you, Mr. Haley.
Okay. Does the board have any just uh, clarifying questions? Uh, uh, yes, Trustee Dwyer. I have just one. Um, I appreciate the information we received and particularly about the, the plans for the Hillsdale prompt. Can I assume that Burlingame Mills and CAP have already had their prompts so we won't have an issue, there's no issues there? No, no, they haven't had their prompts yet. Um, their prompts are later in the year. Let's see. Um, I know that uh, the Burlingame um, uh, prom is on the 21st of, of May. Is that right, uh, Sarah? Yeah. So and that's, yeah, go ahead. Two on the 7th, I believe, or the weekend of the 7th. Two are on the weekend of the 7th? I believe so, yes. Right. So that would be Mills and Cap. Yes. And uh, two inter uh, interesting things about uh, those, the, the Mills and, and Cap event, uh, both are, one is on a, a boat. And so um, you've got considerable outside uh, space um, for students there. And then the same, uh, the Cappuccino event um, is, uh, has a large uh, outdoor presence as well. And what about Burlingame? Burlingame is inside. I think it's at uh, City Hall in San Francisco. But it's it's considerably later. It has a very high ceiling, City Hall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, given the information provided on on the Hillsdale one, uh, I thought that that would be pertinent for us to know about the other event, the other perspective prom. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there are no other uh, clarifying questions from the board. Let me uh, uh, take uh, uh, public comments. Okay, I will promote Jay Carson. You will have three minutes. Go ahead, Jay Carson. All right, thank you so much. Hi, I'm Jennifer Carson. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, thank you for all the time, energy, and emotion put forward by the district site staff related to our current COVID protocols. Though not perfect, our schools have been up and running all year, the students in school, and teachers working again under exceptional circumstances. I'm proud of the work the sites are doing every day and feel confident that we are ready for mass choice. In fact, based on what I see on campus, I will be surprised if many students remove their masks on Monday or in two weeks even. The vast majority still wear them even outside during the day. But I do worry deeply about the number of students literally hiding behind their masks and their hoods. The part that feels familiar with me is the sense of anxiety and excitement of what's next. Similar to what Dr. Skelly just said, last year we needed the practice of being on campus even if it was just for a quarter so that we would be emotionally ready for a return in August. Similarly, we need to start unmasking this spring so that we can support those that are nervous and gradually continue our return to smiles. Thank you for aligning with the CDPH and the San Mateo County Health Authorities who recommend mass choice. Now, actually, I wrote that five weeks ago for the Sequoia District. <laughs> I said it on the Wednesday night before this uh, board meeting, and I didn't end up going to the Thursday night meeting because I assumed that all of the boards were in the county, we're gonna go a similar direction. Now I can also speak to the rollout and the progress that other districts have made. It's good, it's healthy, and it's been conflict free. It's time to end the mask theater, which is exactly what we're doing right now, and allow our kids to become the butterflies out of their COVID, co co COVID cocoons. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Philibosian, I hope I said your name correctly. Mr. Phil, okay, okay. You may go ahead, Mr. Philibosian. You can unmute, you have three moments, three minutes. Oh, sorry, I was on mute there. So I'm trying to understand. So in two weeks, what's gonna dictate 
um, the optional mask wearing. Um, I know a couple of years back or a year ago, um, you know, there was a certain percentage of cases and there's a certain, um, you know, percentage that we needed to be at as far as, um, you know, cases um, in, in COVID and also a percentage of students and faculty that needed to be vaccinated. Um, we've hit those numbers, right? So we're there. Um, however, we're still wearing masks. So I'm just trying to understand what's going to change, what needs to change in two weeks in order for these kids to not be wearing masks in the classroom. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Shar. I will now promote you. Mr. Shar, when you're, you can now begin, you have three minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Rick Shaw. Um, thanks uh, for the great opportunities. I'm speaking tonight to support the removal of masks uh, in our school district. So from the federal government to California government, even to the San Mateo local government, the indoor mask mandate has been lifted for a while. Across the United States and the entire European Union, it's very difficult to find another school district which is still required mass mandate. If millions of other students and teachers can live with mask optional in school, so can we. It is long overdue to remove the fear and move on, please. This, this school year only has one month, one month left. I believe most parents can live with mass mandate to get over with it, right? We don't want a dramatic change at the time of final exams, AP exam, that's very understandable. What I'm very concerned about is the mindset behind our scoreboard in this matter particularly. So we are already in the third year of the pandemic. And luckily, we have effective vaccines and a pharmaceutical product to fight the COVID. The pandemic landscape has dramatically changed in our favor. Unfortunately, the logic and mindset behind our school board in this matter has not changed accordingly. The school board still wants to remain minimum of a virus in our schools. They have a fear of flare up. But looking forward this way, with this kind of mindset, our teachers and kids, we have to wear the mask forever. Is this the thing we want to go? But very unfortunately, no matter what you do, you cannot stop the spreading of this virus. That's period. But the fundamental goal should be to reduce the impact of, of having COVID by vaccination, by medicines, by natural infections, instead of attempt to cut the spread, because that's the battle cannot, you cannot win from day one. Look at what happened in China in Shanghai. They have a draconian lockdowns. They still cannot control the virus, right? But why are we still doing that? So instead of making its own policy for things the board members do not fully understand, the school board needs to follow recommendations from the federal government, from the California government, from the San Mateo County, that is to remove the mask mandate for school kids and the teachers. If you want to wear the mask, fine. You can wear one layer, two layer, or 10 layers, or N95, it's your choice. For a portion of students and teachers, they hate it, they had enough. It's been two years, we need to give them a chance. Mr. Shar, could you uh, wind up your uh, comments? Uh, yeah, thank you. So at the same time, we need to, have, we need to relax the quarantine rule as well, because we, if we remove the mask, there will be flare up, there will be a little bit more cases, now you've just sent the kids all back to home. Then You're way uh, past your three minutes, uh, Mr. Shard. Thank you, Mr. Shard. Spencer Lynch, I'll now promote you.
Mr. Lynch, go ahead, please. Um, good evening, members of the board and Superintendent Skelly. Uh, my name is Spencer Lynch, and I'm currently a junior at Cappuccino High School. I previously sent you all an email. However, I wanted to take the time to come and talk to you in person. And I urge you to keep the indoor mask mandate in place until the end of the year. I am not asking this without reason, however. There has been a lot of research that has proved that masks help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in schools. This has been proven recently in our own district at San Mateo High School. Recently, they had their prom. However, at this event, masks were only strongly recommended. And as a result, there were almost 90 positive COVID cases in the week following, which was a 1,400% increase in cases from the week before, where there are only six cases in comparison. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Aragon High School had their prom on the same night. However, they required masks and there was non uptick in cases. If the district were to implement the CDPH guidelines um, district wide during school hours, it could mean that cases would rise on an extreme scale across every school in the district. And this late in the year, we simply have so much to lose, like proms, graduations, and other end of the year festivities that we have unfortunately missed out on over the past two years. To ensure the safety of all district students and staff and that these end of the year festivities get to happen, the district should keep the current mask policies and guidelines in place until the end of the school year at the very least. It is my genuine hope that you take these points into consideration when you vote on this matter tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your comments. Christine Chambers, I will now promote you. Okay, Ms. Chambers. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Hi, I'm an Aragon 2020 high school graduate. I'm currently in college and I don't like doing my homework. Doing homework is annoying and I've been doing it for years. I'm ready to stop doing my homework altogether. Unfortunately, if I stop doing my homework, there will be consequences. My grades will drop and I may not be able to transfer to the college of my choice. So I do my homework. If I don't, there will be consequences. If we end the mask mandate in schools, there will be consequences. I don't like wearing a mask, they can get annoying, but wearing a piece of fabric over my face has never interfered with my ability to learn or enjoy an event. I wear a mask not only to keep myself safe, but to keep the vulnerable members of my family safe. Even if no one in my family was at high risk, I would still wear a mask to protect the high risk members of my community. And even if I don't know, even if I don't know who is high risk and who is not. If I were to go without my mask, I would be dishonoring my community and my family, disregarding their safety. Community leaders don't yet want to mandate the vaccine. So why would we remove the only other safeguard there is in place to stop the spread of the disease? If fewer people wear masks, more people will die. You know that statement is true. If fewer people wear masks, more people will die. Are we really willing to sacrifice the health and lives of people because masks are annoying? This is literally life or death. Here's something really shocking. I'm not great at math, but you can check this. There were 329.5 million people in this country as of the year 2020. 898,000 people have died from COVID in this country. If I'm doing the math right, that means that about one in 333 Americans have died from COVID. That's not one out of 333 that got sick. That's one out of 333 people in the country as a whole that have died. I don't want to get, I don't want to think that kids, their families or staff from our district or any district are going to die because we stopped doing something as easy as wearing a mask. I'm completely baffled by the fact that we are even considering ending this mandate. Keeping masks on is really not a huge favor to ask, but it is hugely important. Be smart about this, please, and don't let the anti-maskers strong arm you into doing what you know is the logical solution. I think we should mandate masks until the end of the year, and I would mandate the vaccine this fall, just like the 10 other vaccines that are required. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Margo Minan, I will now promote you. Ms. Minan, go, go ahead, please. 
Thank you. Good evening, President Hanley, members of the board, Dr. Skelly and our community here tonight. I apologize for my earlier faux pas and coming in early. My name is Margo Myman, and I teach math at Hillsdale High School. I've taught at Hillsdale for a total of 20 years and this year I teach mostly juniors and seniors. I would like to echo what Dr. Skelly was saying earlier about lifting the mask mandate in a few weeks. I support a mask optional policy for our schools beginning May 2nd, if not earlier. In the past, I have been a proponent of wearing masks, but the situation we're in now with the pandemic is quite different than where we were a year ago or even six months ago. Vaccination rates in our county are high, hospitalization rates are low, and they continue to decrease. On April 19th, the, the San Francisco Chronicle published a piece entitled, Four COVID Experts Say It's Time to Accept Reality. Vaccines Works, Mask Mandates Don't. The four authors of the piece are from the University of North Carolina and the UCSF School of Medicine. And I'd like to read an excerpt, quote, the largest CDC study on masking in schools found that masking students made no statistically significant difference. California counties with mask mandates fared no better in terms of cases and hospitalizations than those without mandates when vaccination rates were similar. In fact, a recent report published by the CDC itself confirmed cloth masks made no appreciable difference in infection risk. Furthermore, there's emerging evidence that masking can be harmful, particularly for younger children." End quote. We don't teach young children in high school, but I can tell you that mask fatigue is real, and so is the power of a smile. We are all missing out, and I'm wearing this mask to make that point. You can't see my smile right now. It may seem ridiculous to lift the mask mandate for just the last month of school, but for our students, especially our seniors, those last four weeks are not nothing. Last month of school is really exciting, important time for many students. I support a mask optional policy that would bring a great deal of joy to our campuses during the last few weeks of school. The data says it's time to lift the mandate, and I hope you agree. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Nils Heedley, I will now promote you. Okay, all right, when you're ready. Hi, um, I'm just gonna try to say it as, as well as the students who have already spoken tonight. Um, my name is Nils Headley and I'm a teacher and uh, a parent of a Mills High School student. I teach government, math and economics. And um, I wanna thank you guys for all of your hard work. My father was on our local school board in Missouri for nine years. It's an important job and some folks can be quite rude in sharing their opinions. I'm sorry you've had to suffer that. I'm speaking to you tonight to express my support for extending the mask mandate through the end of the school year, and there are many reasons for this. Many students have important events still to come, and Superintendent Skelly and others have gone through them already. They're important events, and we should listen to the students, and they want to have them. That's why many of them that have come to speak tonight have said they're willing to wear a mask to do that. My students aren't hiding behind their masks. They know their value. And unlike attending a Warriors game, school is compulsory, not a choice for students. We have plenty of evidence of how mask wearing decreases the likelihood of COVID spread, both locally and abroad. We've seen the chaos at United Kingdom airports as a result of lifting UK wide mask mandates and the numerous infections among employees of the airlines and their flight crews. Conversely, I was a chaperone on a Mills music field trip to Disneyland a month ago. Trustee Land, I hope uh, you have a good time. It was a lot of fun. We tested beforehand, masked consistently, inside and often outside. I was so proud of the students and the care that they showed for each other. Students had a lot of fun and the masks didn't impair that. After four days and interactions with thousands of strangers, we recorded a grand total of zero positive cases. As we go through our district-wide self-study on race, diversity, and equity, we should learn from this and recognize our responsibility to students and the privilege that some have when it comes to dealing with COVID. I got COVID earlier in the year, but I have a house and a spare room in which to isolate. I also had a Corsi box that I had built to filter the air. 
I masked the whole time I was in the house with my family. And after a week, I finally tested negative and neither in my, my wife nor my son got COVID. I strongly believe that this was due to our ability to met, uh, mitigate. Not everyone is fortunate enough to be able to take the mitigation actions we did. How many here have lost a family member to COVID? Our family has lost two, my wife's great aunt and my wife's grandmother. So my selfish desire to see a student's face is not a reason to put another family through what my wife has been through. I hate my mask, but I know why I wear it. And the students do too. My son agreed after hearing Spencer talk. He said, I agree. I think he said uh, Spencer's opinion was based. That's like student lingo. Um, as the adults in charge of caring for students in schools, we have a huge responsibility. Masks are how we demonstrate compassion, empathy, and masks are how we demonstrate our commitment to equity and learning. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle Hauser, I will now promote you. Hello. Hi. My name is Michelle Hauser. I have two children at Hillsdale High School. They are juniors this year and they've spent uh, about half their time at Hillsdale in their bedroom and they've spent, uh, uh, well, I won't do math, but another quarter more with a mask on and they've basically only had one quarter of school since starting high school where they were able to just be like normal students. I don't blame anybody here for the nightmare that we've all had to deal with, which is the um, pandemic, but I think that there have been a lot of decisions made here that don't reflect the students, don't reflect the science, and very, very often just don't make sense. I think we're losing sight of common sense. Um, there were some things that happened during the school year, and I know that there's inconsistency, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen next with this virus, but we also know that science is is the way to go. We want to follow science. Let's follow science. Perhaps we mandate vaccinations, but there have been so many inconsistencies with what we do and what we show to our students at the school. For example, one thing we know about this prom that's coming up for Hillsdale High School is that there will be busloads of students heading to the prom. Um, none of them will have masks on. They'll have pre and post prom parties. They'll socialize at the prom. Um, maybe outside with no mask on and then inside with a mask on, are they gonna, are you gonna be forcing them to be six feet apart? I don't think so. There's gonna be in San Francisco where San Francisco is mask optional. So they'll be interacting with the community there. They'll go home to their families where their parents have the option of wearing masks in um, the community and at work where their siblings even don't have to wear masks at school. It's just our four high schools that are doing this. So it makes it it doesn't make sense. It's just not it goes against common sense. There are many other things during the school year that didn't make sense. And I'm not an anti masker. I'm very pro mask. I was the first one to get a vaccine. The second I could my kids got vaccinated. We've been boosted. We follow the science. But why would we have to take a COVID test to go to the prom? Why would the children have to be tested and then still wear a mask at the prom? It, Aren't we showing that if they take a test and they're negative, then they can go to the prom and not have to worry that they're going to spread the virus? What is the science behind having to wear a mask when you are negative? My son had uh, surgery two weeks ago at Stanford Hospital. He had had COVID early on uh, earlier this year. And so he had um, he was within the 90 day period of not having to get tested because there was a good chance he would get te would test positive. Stanford Hospital, where he had his surgery, did not require that he have a COVID test. However, once again, our school goes above and beyond, and we're going to tell the students that even if they did have COVID within the last 90 days, they do need to test before the prom. It just doesn't make sense that we're going- Could you uh, wrap up your remarks, Ms. Hauser? Yeah, I'll wrap it up by just saying that I do appreciate all you do. Dr. Skelly, I'm sorry to see you go. I know you never signed up for this and it's been more than you could ever have imagined you'd be taking on, um, but I just hope you hear us because the kids might not have a fit at school or March, but they will talk to their parents and they will talk to their friends. Of course, they're going to do what you tell them to do at school. They're not defiant. Anyway, thank you for the time. Thank you. Jessica Johnson, I will now promote you.
Is this uh, our last comment for Living Hanley? Hi there. Um, first, I too want to thank you for your service and your dedication to our students and our schools. I'm a graduate of Hillsdale class of 94. My husband is Hillsdale class of 93. We have a freshman daughter, Ashlyn, who is hearing impaired. She was born deaf. She wears bilateral cochlear implants. And so I know many of you say that masks are not a big deal for her. They're everything. Um, they affect every aspect of her learning and of her social interaction, her engagement. Um, she is an off the charts extrovert. And this season has been particularly difficult for her. She had a 4.0 GPA coming out of Abbott. It has declined almost a full point this year as she's gone back in person. So I realize it's easy to say that it's not a big deal. Our kids are resilient. Our kids are can bounce back. Um, ours for our daughter, it is a huge deal. For us, it's a huge deal. And to kind of echo what Michelle says, I think as a mom of a special needs child, and I'm one of many, you know, there are other hearing impaired students at the high schools, there are other special needs students at the high schools. Um, you know, what's difficult is when I look across our country, right, and I see college basketball, I just attended at my daughter's at a college in Arizona, we just went to a basketball game, you know, there's these events happening all over the country with thousands of people not wearing masks. And so again, what Michelle's saying, I, ha I share the same sentiment. It's just, um, there's an element to it that is nonsensical. And again, I'm not a medical professional. I don't know, um, that anyone here is, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, you know, my, my hope would be that we could just continue with what the CDC recommends and the San Mateo County Public Health. And again, you know, COVID is here to stay. Unfortunately, there's going to be upticks. These proms that are coming up, I imagine we're going to have an uptick. That's just the nature of the virus. And if not now, when? That's my question. If not now, when? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So I think that concludes uh, public comment. Yes. So we can um, we can begin our discussion. Is there anyone who would particularly like to uh, lead off? I'd like to ask some questions, if possible. Okay. Uh, there were some good points made by the uh, by, made by the public. Uh, one of them, when we come back, and what what's that date? May fifth or May? Um, what what you know? What criteria are we going to be looking at? I mean, do we know that criteria? And is you know because in the, your presentation, Superintendent, you made it sound like it was pretty. It's going to be pretty binary. It's either, yes, you know, these things fall in place and yes, we're done. And we don't even have mask on by the end of the meeting. Uh, do we know those criteria and how we're gonna measure that? So I, I'm interested in your discussion on this topic. I think that, it, that you've heard a lot of different pieces about the, the psychological, um, you know, issues, the, um, you know, the desire that I have to see us. Um, have masks optional or masks strongly recommended before the end of the year. Um, for me, at least, I think um, you certainly don't want to see an outbreak um, at one of the um, events between now and the, and the end of the school year. If we had that kind of situation, that would be um, really difficult. Um, you know, we if you look back on April 4th, we were at 23 cases in the district. Um, that feels like a number that um, given the positive uh, pieces of, of having these our students be in school with the option feels like a, the right place to, to go. Um, the R right now is 1.04. I wish it would be below one, but I can see um, a case uh, numbers like that um, that would make me feel comfortable. Um, in in that situation, um, and, and I I, th I do think that uh, you know if you look at some of our schools, we're not seeing a whole bunch of of COVID. Um, you know, you've got um, schools that over the last three three weeks 
have a total of six cases or, or you know, so, you know, Mills and Cap, they had six cases. And so that's an average of two cases a, a week. Um, that would be a situation in which I would certainly think that having the, uh, having mass cell for those last three weeks, would the benefits of that out, would outweigh any sort of concerns I would have around safety. And then finally, you know, I think we need to continue to look at that hospital rate, right? I mean, the numbers in, of hospital cases are very, very low right now. And so we're dealing with a variant that it, at least among the vaccinated and among the students that we have are not causing uh, kids to be really sick. I mean, you, Ms. Devaney, you may have something to add, but we're not hearing any reports of students ending up in the hospital or family members of students who have COVID um, ending up in the hospital. So that's a broad answer, um, but I, you know that, that would be my thought. I, I wanna bring you a recommendation on the 5th that you make uh, mass strongly recommended. I've got two more and they're quick. They're just questions, not opinions. Um, we had a testing protocol for all the extracurricular events, you know, swimming and we, we offered testing and we required the testing. And I think at that point we still had a waiver possibility or maybe, no, we, we didn't have a waiver possibility. Uh, was that successful? You know, in that that testing really kept kept those events going and and did not result in any uh, outbreaks. Mr. Vanny, you want to take a shot at that? Are we talking about our 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 unback? Are we talking about our board policy that we pat that we passed? Well, where you know, if you were, and I'm trying to think exactly what it was. If you was it, if you were unvaccinated, mm -hmm. you. Yeah you had to get a test um, and I guess, or have your card so you could participate. Um, and was that successful? I think that we consistently offered testing and we did our best. Um, sports was easier because we had rosters and schedules for those activities that didn't have consistent meetings or performances. It was dependent a lot on us getting tennis records and dates in advance. Um, but yeah, I think we test and when we test, we find cases and we're able to um, hopefully decrease um, the potential of that spread. But I think as we've seen throughout this year, there's different periods of time where we have increases and decreases of cases. And I think we saw that through our testing programs. And then we tried to make um, you know informed decisions when we had those things going on. So. We had multiple cases on a team, you know, something we're experiencing now in, in some spots, then we take a pause, um, obviously, with um, the guidance from our county partners. So I would say that that was successful, but in some areas, um, it was dependent on the information we had. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to understand if, you know, if, if people are vaccinated uh, and there's outdoors, you know, what what are the real risks, but I'm not in a position to uh, really assess that. And the last question is just on hearing impaired. What are we doing for people who are hearing imp impaired uh, to support them? And I know we got an agreement that I think was on the consent. Um, wasn't there an agreement? How are we serving them, helping them um, with their academic, with their studies? You know, that Ms. Johnson's comment is um, is something that hasn't been brought to my attention. I, I don't know, Ms. Kempke may have some information or Ms. Devaney, but we, we need to follow. I don't I don't have an answer for you tonight, uh, Mr. Griffin, but we we'll, we can circle back on that issue for you and provide some information um, in a weekly. That, that, that's fine. I mean, I appreciate the, the, the canter there. So that, those are the questions I have. So. So, um, Trustee Zuniga. Yes, thank you. Um, in regards to people who have um, hearing disabilities, there are options for specific masks that are for the, um, that community. Um, in the disability justice world, that's something that we brought up um, early on in the pandemic because we noticed that it was difficult for people that um, either needed to um, to have you know, something that was clear or something that was more functional. Um, I can share some resources with you. Uh, Disability Rights California has some great articles as well as the um, 
Disability Rights and Education Fund. They also have some really great articles. So um, we can talk offline, Dr. Skelly. Um, I guess, well, one of my questions was going to be that, um, what, you know, have we explored any other options for students that, um, you know, that need those types of masks? Because it's not just the um, community of students with hearing disabilities, but also others too. Um, so that that was answered. Um, I also wanted to ask about um, one of the proms, I, I can't remember which one was supposed to be completely indoors and what the protocol is gonna be for that um, in regards to, um, you know, the, the masks being um, removed at that point, you know, if they are. Um, if you, I'll, I'll ask the rest of my questions in a second. So you can answer that one. So the, the, the remaining prom then is fully indoors. And I don't know if it has any outdoor um, space. Um, the, um, is, is the Burlingame uh, event, and it is the week before uh, graduation. So um, we, we frankly haven't gotten there. Um, we're, we're focused on the Hillsdale and, the, and the, um, the ramifications of the outbreak at San Mateo High School. Um, uh, so we, and then, you know, uh, things change so quickly that trying to make a policy about Burlingame at this point, you know, we want to continue to learn from what happens in the next event and then um, and then go from there. I don't know if you have anything else to add, Ms. Devaney. Okay. And, um, you know, we did make masks, you know, strongly recommended for this last prom and, you know, it showed that people didn't wear them. <laughs> and so that's why we're, we are where we're at. And so that's what concerns me when it comes to strongly recommended. Um, are people going to wear them? Um, not everyone is vaccinated. And so are people that are not vaccinated going to be wearing their masks to protect other people? I, I get it when people say, well, you know, they can, you know, people that are compromised can wear their masks and they can choose to distance distance, but it's like, we're one community. And so if that, pre like, if that prevents someone in our community from not being able to participate in anything, for example, like prom, there are some students that do have parents that are compromised and are maybe even compromised themselves that will not be going to prom because of these issues. And so what do we do for them? You know, how are we going to include things for them? Because that means that someone in our community cannot participate it's not accessible to them and and you know it sends a message of like it doesn't matter and so i don't know um you know that those are the things that really concern me um i'm concerned about the individualism that's going on like we think about you know it doesn't bother me and it's not affecting me so um, you know, those people can just mask when they want. And I had heard from someone that said, well, you know, teachers that are compromised or that have had cancer or have had uh, some sort of transplant, really, maybe they really even shouldn't be teaching in a, in a large setting. That is unacceptable. That's ableism. That is wrong. It's discriminating against someone in our community that's willing, that wants to participate as a teacher. And so why wouldn't we do something to accommodate them? That, that, really, that really disturbs me. Um, my uncle died three weeks ago of COVID. He, his caregiver, my, my, my uncle was very old, but his caregiver came in um, with her children. My aunt was out of town and her, her children were not vaccinated and they had colds. They were not wearing their masks. She doesn't, she doesn't believe in the mask situation. And so my uncle, he was vaccinated. He ended up getting it, but he was so much older that he couldn't, his body couldn't handle it. And he ended up passing away. And it was, he wasn't out in the community. He wasn't out doing whatever. He had gotten it from someone else that came to his home. And so again, these are the, the concerns I think that are coming from the community is like, how is it going to spread to the rest of us? Um, uh, I can't remember who it was that had said that they were concerned for people that can't quarantine. Not all of us have it like that. We don't have, not all of us have a large, I mean, I myself live in a one bedroom apartment. If I had small children and I had a quarantine, I don't know how we would do that. Um, so I think it's the same, you know, the same points as I had made in the past. Um, and it's not living on fear. It, this is fact. It happens. Um, this is what's going to happen to our community. If, people end up getting sick. 
Um, so I am just hoping that, you know, we can think kind of beyond our own just social circles and our own selves to say, you know, to remember that we are one large community. We are, we are one large school district. We are a community. And if one of our people, one of the people in our community doesn't have access, we're not a community. Thanks. Okay, uh, Trustee Dwyer. I wanna ask a question on um, the, what, what's gonna be different the fifth than today? Uh, why the fifth? I get, yeah, I guess that's my question. What is it about the fifth? that would, would make, it, make a difference? What do we so, anticipate happening mm -hmm. between now and the fifth of this? So, so I'll ask uh, Ms. Devaney to add to my answer. Um, I think we've um, suffered an outbreak um, here and the CDPH has asked us to, um, has recommended that we keep masks on for two weeks. So from my perspective, we're following the science uh, on this topic associated with, uh, with the weight. Um, so that's that's the, the biggest um, reason for this recommendation. I, I I don't what what I hope will be different on the on the fifth is that the number of cases that we have is is significantly lower than 106 or 42 that we're down in the 20s. And so the num the 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 exposure the, the amount of COVID we have in our 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 schools collectively. Is is significantly lower, um, Mr. Vane, Do you have anything to add to that? No, that's right. I think we want to follow uh, the guidance when we're in a surge or an outbreak setting, and that's what that would be: is to remain with the mask and with this extra safety layers that we've instituted for the next several weeks until we start to see cases decline. Okay, um, I guess my con my concern. Education is compulsory, so it's not like going to a Warriors game. We, you know, if you're lucky enough to get a ticket, you can go, and you don't have to wear a mask. But um, kids have to come to school. High school students have to come to school, and and I guess the con the concern I have um, is that we have proms, and the Burlingame one is particularly concerning because it's indoors, and we've already seen the effect of that. But I think it's the after parties and all the other gatherings that are that happen and that are associated with that event, but. We have AP testing. Kids have worked all year on those AP classes um, to take those tests. We have we have end of school testing. We have end of school papers. We have end of school events for seniors that are coming up that they've sac we've not been able to have. And this is our first year of being, able, you know, we're, we're back and now students can have those outdoor events with the with the jumpathon and all that kind of stuff. They they rent and they have a big thing outside uh, for seniors, senior day or whatever. Um, and then graduations, which I believe are probably all outdoors this year. Um, but it would seem, yeah, I, I guess I'm concerned about compromising anyone's attendance or participation, particularly in exams that are going to be important to their to their futures um, and that they've worked so hard for. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm rather I'm concerned about all of it. And I really do appreciate all of the input we had tonight because it was very informative and um, it was very individual, and I appreciated that. I particularly appreciated the students too um, speaking to us. So thank you. Trustee Land. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. So um, this weighs heavily on me for a variety of reasons. Um, if we really look at, you know, a lot of people talk about the science and um, I really wanna appreciate the students who talked tonight and everyone who contributed um, in the conversation this evening. For me, if you look at the data that was given tonight, we had two proms. One prom where the masks were off and look what happens, the exposure was over 85, 83 kids uh, got sick. Um, imagine what's gonna happen if that continues and spreads further. They're gonna be missing out on activities like Ms. Trustee Dwyer was talking about. And I think that's unfortunate. I would not like to see that happen. Um, so if we look at the data as the, as the I don't even know that the CHDP recommends to, you know, because of this uptick, we do need to keep this going for two more weeks. 
Um, I was ready to, to change gears at this point. But I also was proud of the fact that we did extend it. We extended it because we were worried there was going to be an uptick after spring break. And by gosh, there was. And we see it in, a, in, in one significant way already. Um, the one thing that I have to say that, that makes this decision difficult, I mean, the two weeks decision is easy. You know, the, 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 the health department is saying, you have an uptick, this will help, you need to do it. Um, but I also feel like, you know, in my own district and with my students, and I, I do appreciate the uh, speaker who uh, wished me luck on getting down here to Disneyland, we are going to wear masks and it's going to be um, something that we do regularly. And um, I think it's important. And I think that my students, even though we're at highly recommended, everyone on these buses that are behind me, are the kids are wearing masks and they know it and they know that the, the they know the importance of it and they're only in middle school. Um, I think I think for me, I, I do trust our students and I would like to see us go to a highly recommend because I think what's unfortunate now is that this is a battle between do it and not do it and there's only and there's no middle ground. What I've seen in my own campus is we went to highly recommend it, but we had a really good conversation about it. We talked about how one of our one of our teachers is immunocompromised. And if you go into her classroom, everyone should wear that mask. And um, we talked about outside versus inside and how outside we've we've been more lax about it and we haven't had our masks on. A lot more people take their masks off. But when they're in close quarters or they're in line, they put their masks on really just common sense things. And I know one speaker started talking about that. And it is about common sense and how effective these masks are. And so I, I guess it's sad that we have to have it as a mandated uh, conversation and that there's an argument about it. I think the health department has recommended for two more weeks, we should go with that. After that, let's try to, I really like to show the strength of our students that they know what would be right. And I really do feel like a majority of our students would wear the masks. And for those who are not, it's, 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 it's about respect. And I'm hoping that our students would realize that and that it's not this battle of who's right and who's wrong in the way in which our national political environment has been. And I think that's just a sad part of, of, of this discussion tonight. Um, if, if we really just look at the facts, it's, there's an uptick, we need to deal with it. The, the, the health department said to do it, to try it for two more weeks, do it for two more weeks and let's move on. And then in two weeks, we can lift it up like uh, Dr. Skelly's requesting. So that's my comments. Thank you. So I have a, you know, I have a couple of, uh, of concerns about it. Um, the, you know, as Dr. Skelly noted, you know, the cases have, have increased and, and San Mateo County is now uh, out of the low category in the CDC community um, um, COVID graph and into the medium category. So, you know, you, you are seeing a, a genuine increase in COVID in San Mateo County. Um, and, you know, the other, the other thing, when you're talking about comparing what's happening in other places, you know, schools, and as several people have mentioned this, you know, schools are fundamentally different from almost every other place in, in society, at least public schools are, because they're compulsory. I mean, people have to go there. Um, and the second way they're different is they have to stay there for a long time. They have to stay there for five, six hours. Um, you know, that's different. You know, no one has to go to a basketball game. No one has to go to CVS. No one has to go to Safeway. Um, you know, and you don't, if you go there, you don't stay five or six hours in, in uh, relatively close quarters, even though our schools do have very good ventilation. Um, uh, 
it, it makes schools different than than almost any other place um, that we're talking about. So that when people look at it and they say, well, there's this event and there's thousands of people that are unmasked. Well, it's not the same. You're not, you're not apples to apples. They, they didn't have to go there. You know, they didn't have to go to the gridiron dinner in Washington, DC. Uh, it's, it, school, schools are just different. And, um, and so that's, that's why, you know, I, I, I take a, a, a strong second look at, 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 you know, how we, how we make a judgment about this. Um, and I, I'm prepared to, um, to support the superintendent's recommendation on this. I think the, uh, the state has come in and looked at it and said that they, they think we should go at, at least another two weeks. I think with the increasing cases in San Mateo County, I think with the increase, the outbreak that we've had in the district, with the fact that schools are different, um, I think it's justified to go another two weeks. I would, I would support um, if if the cases fall back to where they were, you know, before this outbreak. You know, I'd, I'd be willing to look at, at going to a strongly recommend uh, on May 5th um, and see what see what happens. Uh, I'll take a look at the data and take a look at where we are in the county, um, but I would be willing to consider that on, on, on May 5th uh, if the cases have fallen back uh, to where they were. Um, but I'm, I'm willing to support um, the superintendent's recommendation for tonight. Mr. Henley, I think Mr. Griffin has his hand up. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, you know, earlier I had questions, but I, I now I've got some thoughts on the, on the topic. And I don't think COVID's going away. I think everybody now, we all realize and we'll probably be getting vaccination shots from here to eternity. Uh, at the last meeting, I really wanted to go with strongly recommended uh, because I thought we had safeguards and um, that were in place, you know, with the vaccinations and the testing. And I thought that uh, we would uh, have responsible community that would respect each other. Um, I listened to my board members and I went, you know, I went with the, uh, you know, with the vote to uh, re continue to require it. Um, there's a lot of critical activities that are getting ready to come up. And, you know, the, you know, finals and certainly the celebratory, uh, these celebratory things. And, you know, we want to get everybody through the school year. Um, I really had looked forward to moving to the next stage. I continue to look forward. Um, I just don't think now is the time to change, particularly, um, you know, given the mask, given the, I guess it might be empirical data about what a mandatory mask prom look like versus a a, a mass recommended prom look like. Uh, but I, I really look forward to, uh, I, you know, I know their impacts. Believe me, I think everybody who wears a mask and I was out there walking every day wearing a mask because you know, I might come into contact with people. I do look forward to uh, uh, making it uh, uh, strongly recommended. Uh, and I look forward to seeing some some data that uh, supports that decision. And I think we need to follow the the recommendation by uh, CDPH. I think that's the acronym. So, so is there a um, is there a motion to accept the uh, superintendent's recommendation? I'll second. Who made did Greg, Greg made the motion? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, if you if you wanna if you wanna put it on Greg, put it on Greg because he can't defend himself. But I made the motion. You made the motion. Sorry, I, I couldn't hear. I did not make the motion. <laughs> I wish I did, but I was in traffic. 
<laughs> okay. Be careful. It was muffled. It was muffled, at least on my computer, it was muffled. Okay, we have a, a motion by uh, Trustee Griffin and a second by Trustee Zuniga. Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Uh, Trustee Land? Yes. Uh, Trustee Dwyer? Yes. And I vote yes. So the superintendent's uh, recommendation for two more weeks is approved five to nothing. Okay, I believe uh, our next uh, item is the DLAC report. Yeah, so while, while, uh, while we're promoting the folks, uh, I, I don't like the promoting and demoting. That's not uh, a good language. Um, so, um, but anyway, we are promoting with pleasure. Um, uh, the folks who are going to present here on our district English learning uh, learner advisory committee. Um, once again, I want to uh, thank uh, um, our parents in this committee. This is a board meeting. Um, there's a there's a joke among superintendents that you have to you should bring a win to every single board meeting. Um, this is one of those items that is always a win, right? Because we get to hear from our community about things that they want. And sometimes they tell us things that uh, we might not always want to hear, but in the end, we, we win by being better a better district for it. Um, I want to thank the parents who are going to participate tonight, those parents who are paying attention uh, to our uh, meeting tonight, and then uh, staff uh, under the direction of uh, Dr. Shellman and Dr. Kempke um, uh, to uh, to start this. So, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Shellman, when I told her she was going to be second, she said it'll start at nine o'clock. You were wrong. It's nine ten. So, uh, from I know you are still on the board's uh, attention here. So, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Can I ask Char? Do you see Daisy Velasquez? Because I don't see her as being promoted, and she's one of our parent presenters. Yeah, we, we've been searching for her. We don't find her either. I don't. I didn't know. Maybe she had a different uh, name on her screen, but I, we do not see her, Doctor Showman. Okay, thank. We'll keep you. looking. Okay, thanks. Um, I'll have Elsa maybe can check too. So. Um, good evening, board, members of uh, cabinet. It's always a privilege um, to be here to introduce our DLAC parent group. Um, this is their you know, report. They've worked really hard throughout the year. It is an honor and privilege to work with this group of parents who show up virtually um, this year every month, although we did have one in-person gathering and it was a kind of a celebration of them as well as a working session. Um, I'm really proud of these parents because not only are they there dedicated to their own students and their involvement in our district, but they serve as representative of all the English learners in our district. It's always a learning opportunity for me um, to learn from them and to gather feedback that they've gotten at their ELAC meetings. So tonight we will have three parent presenters, uh, Mrs. Fatima Calero, who's here representing Cappuccino High School. Um, if we find Ms. Daisy Velasquez from San Mateo High School, Robert Boras from Aragon High School, um, and Elsa Polito will be supporting us. She is our district family engagement coordinator who partners in our facilitation of DLAC meetings. She, um, along with our other family engagement coordinator, serve as lifelines to our families. She's often my lifeline um, as well. So if we can move, if we can show our slide deck, then we can go to our second slide for introductions. And I'm going to hand it off um, to our parents. So two of our parents will be presenting in Spanish and Elsa will do the interpretation. And then Mr. Porras will present in English and we'll rely on Enrique to do that interpretation. Um, so without further ado, I will um, hand it off to our parents. Hi, good evening. My name is Robert Porras. I am a parent of a sophomore in the AVID program at Aragon High School. And additionally, I'm also co-vice -pre co president of the Latin PTSO parents group at Aragon. Pleasure to speak with you all. Señora Calero, ¿se quiere presentar? Sí. Uh, buenas noches, mi nombre es Fátima Calero. Represento a la Escuela Capuchino High School. 
Um, y me da mucho gusto estar con ustedes esta noche. Good evening. My name is Fatima Calero. I am a representative for Cappuccino High School, and it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Char, I believe our third parent might show under the name of their student, which is Miguel Tejada. Can you look for um, that name to promote Daisy? And while we do that, we'll... Yes, if we could ask, we're sending the uh, invitation to promote if they can please accept it on their end. Yeah, I, I think I see Daisy. Señora Daisy, ¿estás aquí? Sí, gracias. Okay. ¿Quieres Great. hacer una introducción, por favor? Sí. Uh, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Daisy Velázquez. Uh, represento San Mateo High School. Um, ¿Va a traducir o está bien? Diga. Uh, mi hijo es un junior y este es mi tercer año de participar en DILAC. Ha sido una buena experiencia de aprendizaje que he compartido con la comunidad de la escuela. Good evening, my name is Daisy Velasquez. I am the parent of a junior from San Mateo High School. This is my third year representing DLAC and it has been experience of learning, which I have shared with the parents community. Uh, siguiente slide, por favor. Estimados miembros de la mesa directiva y superintendente Scali, nosotros los miembros de DILAC queremos hacer los siguientes reconocimientos. Honorable members of the board and superintendent Scali, we, the members of DILAC, would like to make the following commendations. Primero, la contratación de una trabajadora social bilingüe para apoyar a los estudiantes aprendices de inglés. First, the hiring of a bilingual social worker that supports the EL student community. Su contratación no podría haber llegado en un mejor momento, dada la entrada de estudiantes recién llegados. The hiring of the social worker couldn't have come at a better time due to the influx of newcomer students. Ella ha sido un gran apoyo para los estudiantes. She's been of great support to the student community. Segundo, el aumento en el apoyo bienestar de nuestros estudiantes aprendices de inglés. Secondly, the increase in wellness support to the student, the EL students. Tercero, la cor corporación de recursos necesarios en las clases, tales como el personal docente y ayudantes de instrucción para atender la inesperada cantidad de alumnos recién llegados. Third, adding needed support, needed support to the classrooms, such as staff and instructional aides. Um, ¿Qué más? Perdón. Ayudantes de instrucción para atender a la inesperada cantidad de alumnos recién llegados. To support the number of newcomer students in our schools. Cuarto. La creación de una serie de recursos educativos en español para las familias. Fourth, the creation of, perdón, Daisy. Okay, fourth, the creation of a parent family support program. Diseñados para informarles del sistema educativo y los servicios y apoyos de nuestro distrito. Designed to help them understand the school system and to inform them of the support services that we have in our district. Y por último, la creación de un equipo de trabajo para los recién llegados. And lastly, the development of a newcomer task force. Para analizar los mejores modelos para servir a este grupo de estudiantes. To analyze best, best models for serving ELD students. Creemos que es un trabajo importante y esperamos que el distrito lo siga apoyando. 
We believe this is an important work and we hope that the district continues to support it. A slide cuatro, por favor. Nuestras recomendaciones se enfocan en cuatro áreas. Our recommendations are focused in four areas. Comunicación, servicio de apoyo para los estudiantes, servicio de apoyo para las familias, procesos y políticas del distrito. The four areas are communication, student support services, family support services, and district policies and processes. Bueno, aquí concluye mi participación. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches. A continuación, señora Calero. This is the end of my presentation. Good evening to you all. And up next is Mrs. Calero. Bueno, uh, como parte de nuestras recomendaciones, uh, vamos a iniciar con lo que es la comunicación que para mí es um, fundamental y vital en cuanto a la educación de nuestros hijos. ¿Puede parar, por favor? Oh, okay. our, rec our first recommendation focuses on communication, which I believe is vital and fundamental um, in supporting our students' education. Uh -huh. uh, como recomendación número uno sería en cuanto a la comunicación, ¿verdad?, Tener reuniones obligatorias y extracurriculares, tanto como deportes, promotores, asociaciones escolares. Esto hace que los alumnos se hagan sentir, pues, como más acogidos dentro de, de, de la escuela, ¿no? Se supone que son estudiantes que están recién llegando al país y lo que queremos es que se sientan bastante incluidos. Sorry, Elsa. Sí. Shar, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. In terms of communication, we recommend that mandatory meetings dealing with sports and extracurricular activities be in Spanish. We believe that having them in, um, in Spanish or in a lang language other than English is vital for the newcomer students, for those students that are participating, um, as well as for their families. Um, when they attend meetings that are in their home language is a way of welcome, welcoming and feeling and make it, making them feel included. Uh, otra de las recomendaciones sería que estamos observando eh, el exceso de la dependencia de la comunicación a través de correo electrónico. Um, hay muchas familias que no usan este sistema de comunicación. Okay. We have observed an overdependence on email communication, and there are many families that do not use the system of communication. Uh -huh. Entonces, existe la necesidad de aumentar el uso de comunicación no escrita. Sería fantástico que la comunicación fuera, está bien por email, porque hay muchos que sí estamos en, eh, usamos este sistema, pero lo ideal también sería a través de una llamada telefónica. There needs to, um, there exists the need to increase non-written communication. There are some families that are on email, but having a voice message Um, to reach the families is of uh, great importance. Uh -huh. uh, otra de las recomendaciones sería, ¿verdad? Uh, prestar más atención a nuestras familias multibilingües que hablan otros idiomas aparte del español y el chino. Eh, se ha aumentado la comunidad de habla portugués y árabe. Entonces consideramos que también debemos incluir estos otros idiomas um, para si está pues todos bien comunicados. We believe that uh, the schools need to pay attention to families that speak languages outside of Spanish and Chinese, such as there has been an increase in Portuguese speaking families, 
We also have Arab speaking families. And we believe that in order to um, fully engage them, um, we need to be able to communicate with them in their home language. Ok, um, otra de las recomendaciones en cuanto a la comunicación es importante que a las familias, las escuelas le comuniquen a las familias qué personal de la escuela habla español o qué, qué persona es bilingüe, perdón. Necesitamos, uh, voy a hacer una pausa, señora. Ok. okay. Ah. Um, she be, the DILAC believes that it's important for schools to inform their parent community who is bilingual, who is Spanish speaking, or who in their staff um, speaks a different language. Ajá. Ok. Uh, en cuanto a mi experiencia en Capuchino, para mí fue fantástico. Eh, este es el último año de mi hijo en, en el high school, está en su grado 12, pero para mí ha sido un año um, de una comunicación excelente en cuanto que desde que nosotros entramos a Capuchino, a nosotros nos informaron quién hablaba español, quién hablaba nuestro idioma. Y para mí eso fue muy importante, muy vital, y eso me ha permitido durante todo el año escolar estar muy presente y muy involucrada en cuanto a la educación de mi hijo. She wants to relate her personal experience at Cappuccino High School. Her son will be graduating this year, but since the beginning, they have had a very positive experience knowing who um, at the school spoke Spanish, which is the home language for her family. And by knowing that, um, it has been easier for her to be informed and to be engaged and it has made it a very successful year. Gracias, señora Pulido. Uh, otra de las recomendaciones también es que tanto los maestros, los consejeros y los administradores deberían comunicar el progreso de los estudiantes o la falta de este a tiempo y de diversas maneras. Puede ser a través de mensajes de textos, llamadas telefónicas, correos electrónicos. Um, Another recommendation is that school staff, including teachers, counselors, or administrators, be able to communicate with families the students' progress or lack of, and um, to have this communication be delivered in various ways um, through email, phone calls, um, just to reach out to the families. Mm -hmm. Uh, en cuanto a este punto de comunicación, eh, al menos eh, en Capuchino High School con la consejera de mi hijo, eh, sí hemos tenido bastante comunicación, pero siempre ha sido porque yo estoy mandándole mensajes o escribiéndole uh, por email o por llamada telefónica, pero sería no todas las familias tenemos a veces el tiempo para hacerlo. Entonces, recomendamos que es bien importante que tomen un momentito de su valioso tiempo. Sabemos que son muchos los estudiantes, muchos, y a esto lo duplicamos con los padres, entonces es el doble de trabajo. Pero sería bueno que nos mantengan al tanto de cómo va el avance de nuestro hijo o qué tanto se está quedando atrás para nosotros como padres estar también apoyando a, a la educación de nuestros hijos. Sabemos que el 50 o el más, más porcentaje más alto se hace en la escuela, pero también en casa, nosotros como padres pues debemos estar bien involucrados y pendientes de, del avance de nuestros hijos okay. en su educación. Um, with regards to communication, she has had a lot of communication with her son's counselor, academic advisor. Um, most of this communication has been the result of her initiating this communication. Um, and she believes that in her personal experience, it has worked and for her family. However, we know that there are families that may not um, reach out um, 
for various reasons. And when the counselor um, takes the initiative or the staff takes the initiative to contact families, um, that could be very beneficial. It is really, really important for families to be updated on the student's progress. Um, she understands um, and the and DLAC members also understand that counselors have a heavy load and that in addition to having many, many students, when um, they reach out to parents, it's doubling their work in a sense. Um, but there is the belief that having this direct communication from the staff to the parents for the EL students, um, it's vital. Gracias. Okay. Seguidamente de este punto, eh, en cuanto a los, a los consejeros, sería beneficioso eh, tener acceso de vez en cuando a los consejeros por las tardes. Continuing with the theme of communication, having access to counselors um, in the evening hours would be of great benefit. Y eso sería de mucha ayuda para nosotros los padres, así sabemos que de vez en cuando podemos hacer nuestras citas, agendarlas y hablar con ellos y después es mucho mejor, ¿no? Having scheduled evening dates is helpful for parents who are available in the evening hours and when there is already a set schedule and parents know that they can access a counselor in the evening, the, it's easier to plan um, these meetings and um, increase that home school connection. The next slide, please. Ok. Ahora en cuanto a los servicios de apoyo para los estudiantes, uh, tenemos las siguientes recomendaciones. En cuanto a apoyos académicos, uh, asegurarse de que todos los estudiantes, aprendices de inglés, ¿verdad? Um, estén, tengan todo el apoyo necesario para que ellos puedan ir avanzando en su en el inglés, ¿no? En el programa ELD. Uh, necesitamos que reciban todo el apoyo lingüístico y académico que necesitan para aprobar el PAC y así poder reclasificarse. Um, Se puede parar. En yeah. terms of student supports, one of the recommendations is to make sure that all EL students particularly those in the ELD program have the support that they need to develop the English skills, the language that's new to them and they're learning, and that um, the long-term English learners have the support, the academic language support that they need in order to pass the LPAC and reclassify. Gracias. Uh, como siguiente punto, Sería aumentar la exposición de oportunidades educativas de carreras técnicas y opcionales posteriores a la escuela, al high school, ¿verdad? La escuela preparatoria, aparte de la universidad de cuatro años. Eh, existen muchas familias que carecemos de estos conocimientos en cuanto a opciones de estudio después de la preparatoria. Okay. Another recommendation is that students are, th their exposure to technical careers or pathways outside of a four-year university um, increase. Um, there are many families that lack this information. Uh -huh. um, me voy a poner de ejemplo porque ahorita que mi hijo está a punto de graduarse, eh, yo relativamente tengo pocos años viviendo en el país. Es mi único hijo, así que es mi primera experiencia eh, después del high school, ¿verdad? Entonces, me ha costado un poquito. He, he tenido toda la ayuda necesaria de, de capuchino, pero uh, mi trabajo como mamá me ha costado un poco darme cuenta de qué opciones tiene mi hijo para, para después de la preparatoria, antes de la universidad, saber de carreras técnicas. Entonces, 
Uh, para mí ha sido un proceso bien bonito saberlo, pero pienso en los padres que carecen de toda esta información. Entonces, She would like to relate her personal experience. She has been in this country just a few years. She is the mother of only one child, so it's her only child. She has been very active, very engaged, and it's been a great experience for her to learn. Um, as she is new to this country, she didn't have a lot of information, so there has been a process of learning. And uh, she um, is has welcomed and is thankful for the experience and information that her family has has had. However, um, we she thinks about those other families that are not um, that are that are not fortunate to have that ability to connect with the school or be present as much as she has. Gracias. Uh, y como último punto en cuanto al apoyo para los estudiantes, uh, asegurarnos, ¿verdad?, de que los estudiantes aprendices de inglés y él uh, tengan oportunidades para ver a sus consejeros después de sus clases normales, que tengan un tiempo extra adicional con su consejero para que su consejero eh, le aconseje bastante qué camino debe ir tomando después de su preparatoria, perdón, ¿verdad? Eh, para así pues hacerle sentir al estudiante por dónde ir para su meta, qué camino debe tomar para su meta. Mi perro. Um, the, the last point is to ensure that the students have additional time with their academic counselors so that they have this opportunity to learn and for the students to be exposed and learn about pathways and so that they can be guided in order to reach their goals. Esas serían las recomendaciones por mi parte. Those, this is the end of the, her presentation and the, the recommendations that she was to share. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Hi, good evening. As a continuation of student support services recommendations and to give Elsa a break, I will finish the uh, presentation in English. Thank you, Elsa, as always, tremendous job. <laughs> Um, for our ELD students to speed up their English ability, it is important that they be given the opportunities to collaborate with their English speaking peers. We therefore continue to recommend integration into the wider school community. Like the entire student body, all students need opportunities for social engagement. Adding bilingual and bicultural wellness therapists has been very productive. We would like to see their scope expand to include interventions being conducted in a more bilingual fashion. We see benefit in conducting targeted bilingual education around substance abuse prevention, strategies to enhance wellness, <clears throat> and tips for successful integration into U.S. society. Performing interventions in a language not native to the audience poses risk of, of lack of engagement and absorption. Uh, next slide, please. When possible, as we continue to see life returning to pre-pandemic norms, we would like to see the Family Resource Center reopened and have resource centers for families opened at all campuses. Many of our families struggle with access to school systems like Canvas and Aries, enabling facilities on campus where parents can casually pop in to find a wide spectrum of information around their student university education, career development, student wellness, and guidance on how families could best support their student would be greatly beneficial. Basically replicating across the district what Hillsdale High School has successfully implemented. One of the goals within the Latin parents group at Aragon High School is to host a monthly session which focuses on a variety of educational topics. 
We would like to see the district lead and implement something similar across all campuses. Attendance will be far greater if family educational sessions, either in person or virtual, were led by the district. Uh, last point, with financial constraints on part of our families, implementing some type of school laptop checkout system will be helpful for our low, lower income families. Next slide, please. Lastly, we hope to create dialogue and possibly collaborate on how we can make the school registration process easier for arriving families from other countries. When I first registered my child, I too found it a bit complicated and a challenge given the unique circumstance of my family. While I understand and support the countermeasures that are needed to mitigate against possible abuse, we hope and we we hope we can try to find a happy medium that does not diminish our fraud prevention, but at the same time allows families that legitimately belong to the district from experiencing hardships. Many incoming families come from communities that have gaps in documentation and technology. Based on the continued comments we receive from families, we therefore are requesting again this year to help address the complication with the registration process. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, thank you to the board for allowing us this time to share our report and congratulations, Superintendent Skelly on your retirement. Um, at this time, I open the floor to any comments and questions for the group. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to thank our parents for being here and for presenting the work that they've done throughout the year. Yeah, Tercy Zuniga. Yes, um, I can uh, translate myself to give the translators a break. Puedo yo traducir por mí misma para darles un descanso a los que están traduciendo. Muchas gracias. Tengo una pregunta. Estaba queriendo saber si um, tienen medio de tener estudiantes, así como tienen en el PTSO en inglés, estudiantes como representantes en sus grupos para que pudieran también traer información de los alumnos a ustedes. I'm asking if they have student representatives like they do at the uh, PTSOs in English. Um, to then bring in information and vice versa to the rest of the student body. You mean student representatives on DLAC? Yeah, mm -hmm. like having, um, just like they do on the PTSOs. We have not in the past. Um, we've tried, we did try one year, but because it's so parent focused in terms of being an advisory committee. Um, we have recently started um, interviewing our English learner students, um, trying to gather some feedback that's been part of the work of our uh, newcomer task force. And so how, um, how, do this, how does the group get information like directly from the students? Como, como el grupo, um, Tiene acceso a la información directamente de los estudiantes. Alguien quiere responder o quieren que, ya, yeah, Daisy. Sí, yo uh, pertenezco al grupo de padres latinos de San Mateo. Sí, yo y este cada vez que hacemos reunión de padres latinos y um, ellos, yo pregunto o ellos vienen hacia mí y dicen, oh, esto está pasando, necesitamos esto. Por ejemplo, estábamos hablando acerca de los consejeros. Fue una de las cosas que yo llevé a la mesa a TILAC. Y uh, también hablamos acerca de por el tiempo difícil que estábamos Bien. pasando. Personalmente, yo estuve con mi hijo y otro niño que estuvieron de necesita um, de alguna ayuda bien fuerte psicológica porque el niño quería quitar su vida y estuvimos hablando con el consejero. Todo eso llevó la razón para ver que queríamos una 
una trabajadora social uh -huh. para ayudar. A, 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 eso es que nosotros hacemos. Si, si, por ejemplo, yo hablo por San Mateo High School y si yo llevo razones de el grupo de padres latinos. Yo llevo razones. Thank you. Um, sí, y también este, estoy muy en apoyo uh, uh, de, um, de tener reuniones de los um, grupos de atléticos y todo eso en otros idiomas. Y también um, quisiera también que tuvieran unas en idiomas indígenas, porque no hay no hay información, mucha información para esas comunidades um, en todo el condado, no solo en los, los distritos escolares. Um, I was saying that I'm in complete support of having like athletic meetings and things like that in different languages, um, especially in indigenous languages, because we are seeing people coming in from other countries speaking indigenous, indigenous languages. And even throughout the county, it's been really difficult to access that type of translation. So maybe we can um, find something like that. Um, let's see. Um, y también quisiera, um, quisiera también saber cómo ustedes, um, cómo ustedes les uh, apoyan a los padres de familia que, que se envuelvan en las escuelas y que se envuelvan en, en, uh, en diferentes pues, grupos como este que ustedes son muy involucrados y muy um, que apoyan muchos a sus hijos. Um, ¿Cómo es que ustedes este, pueden uh, pedir que los padres de familia se envuelvan? Um, I asked if, uh, what ways do they recruit other parents? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, it's a challenge. Um, it's an unfortunate part of our community that um, you know, we sort of, the community has this viewpoint that it's the school's responsibility and, you know, parents don't really get involved. In, and that's something that's, your question hits me the hardest because I fully agree with you. It's something that um, is an opportunity and, a, and something that we need to address. And so for, for us um, in the Latin Parents Group at Aragon, um, we, we haven't had the chance because of the pandemic, but this coming year, we have a upcoming, um, event, which we're going to recruit some of the um, uh, students that are coming from our feeder schools. Um, uh, we're having like a Latin food festival. And so we're hoping to publicize what it is we do um, and, and get more get more participation that way, um, as well as communication through our, um, our uh, I forget the title, uh, Elsa, I'm sorry, um, show, uh, Mr. Martinez's title. Um, he helps us sort of uh, communicate to our families um, via email and text and all the families that we know are um, registered when they flipped uh, in the registration uh, process that they're uh, Latino or Latina. Um, we, we message them in Spanish and um, that's how we hope to get more participation. Um, but it is a struggle, I'm not going to lie. And I, I wish I knew the answer, um, but it's something that we, we you know, uh, if, if families feel comfortable in coming, then, um, you know, we, we'd see a lot more, but um, kind of a long-winded answer there, but but we're, we're trying. Yeah, thank you. No, and, but, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to add, um, Daisy has made tremendous effort to reach out to families at San Mateo High School. She's always out there speaking with them, bringing them to me, making sure that I connect with them because oftentimes you need that personal touch. You need to be able to speak to someone and explain what DLAC is about, what are the benefits? And she she's out there recruiting. So it's very admirable what she does. She works full time, but she's so committed to the school and to the community as a whole. So I respect that of her. Um, and she's brought different um, parents, but sometimes the work schedule gets in the way. And um, even though we meet only once a month, there are also meetings at school. Um, so I think for some families, every family is different, but for some families, it's work schedule, family commitment. 
Um, but um, I think that the effort is there and we just, I mean, we have a solid group. Um, some of them have been with us for a couple of years. This is Daisy's third year. So she wants to make sure that we have some um, parents from San Mateo that are gonna be with us um, for, for a while. Um, so she, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just, wanted, I just wanted to, oh, perdón. Iba a decir oh. algo, perdón. Sí, sorry. Uh, uh, quiero solo agregar um, a sus dos últimas preguntas. En cuanto a cómo nosotros uh, traemos de los estudiantes la información, al menos en capuchino, ¿verdad? Eh, siempre que teníamos las reuniones de padres latinos, entonces le, le hacíamos saber a los padres que hablaran con sus hijos, cómo se sentían sus hijos, qué necesitaban, qué querían, qué... Entonces, en la siguiente reunión de padres latinos, entonces ya eran donde todos los padres nos exponían um, de los consejeros, de más actividades extracurriculares. Entonces, todo eso lo llevábamos a nota y ya cuando nos reuníamos en las reuniones del PAC, era cuando ya le hacíamos saber a la señora Puli, a todos los miembros, eh, o oh, en capuchino los padres, los hijos quieren esto y esto y esto, o estas necesidades. Entonces, en capuchino, este año que fui miembro, y que puede participar de todas las reuniones se llevó a cabo así entonces sabíamos lo que los chicos querían en cuanto a los padres latinos para que estén más involucrados eh, era exactamente lo mismo tratábamos de hacer con la señora Dulce Hash que es la encargada de hacer las reuniones que las reuniones no fueran tan largas para que los padres pues quisieran llegar a la siguiente no y porque a veces vienen de trabajar sí muchas razones. Entonces, tratar de hacer una reunión eh, precisa, concisa a, a lo que es, a un poco amena, y de esa manera en Capuchino se logró que casi la mayoría de los padres de los estudiantes siempre estuvieran presentes. Eso fue bien importante para así tener a tanto a los padres como a los alumnos involucrados y de esa manera sacar la información que nosotros queríamos para llevarla a la Junta y para traerla a fin de año aquí a ustedes. ¿Y ese era en los grupos de padres de familia? En los grupos de padres okay. familias, de padres okay. latinos. Sí. So she was saying, she was answering my question about how they recruit, um, uh, how they, sorry, how they get information from the students. And she was saying that each uh, parent would ask their, their children, you know, what it is that they, you know, they need and what's interesting to them. And what um, they're interested in being involved in. And so they would take note of that. And at their um, ELAC meetings, they would come back uh, to Elsa or anybody else that was there and give them the information. That way they knew at, you know, Cappuccino, uh, the parents need X, Y, and Z. And she also said that with the, the general parent group, um, with Dulce, she, um, they made sure that the meetings were concise and were, you know, fairly short because a lot of parents are coming from work and it's very um, cumbersome with the time. Um, and so that's how they would uh, get a lot of information. Um, oh, and they would make sure that the kids were actually present. And so that, that was very important to them to have both of them together so they can, you know, they can have the same information and, you know, advocate for some things that were similar. Um, okay, pues quiero siempre yeah. invitarlos a todos que están bienvenidos en cada reunión que tenemos. Si necesitan algo, si no saben um, acerca de la agenda o lo que sea, por favor, pidan, pidan ayuda porque estas uh, reuniones son para ustedes como para toda la comunidad. Así que bienvenidos. I was saying the welcome to all of our meetings um, to please join and, um, you know, if they need any accessibility and learning how to read the agenda or whatever it is that, you know, that they could ask for some help and that they are welcome anytime. Okay. Muchas gracias. Buena presentación. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Land. Thank you. Um, wow. Um, actually, Ligia asked a bunch of the questions I was going to ask. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it's awesome. Um, so first, I want to thank all the parents. Um, gracias a todos. Um, I really thought your presentation was incredible. I, um, I, I really like your suggestions. In fact, um, I, I really want to think outside the box when we talk about um, academic counselors and counselors in, the, in having evening appointments. 
I know that is so difficult to figure out, but I think it's something really worthwhile to pursue. So um, because it's something that we can connect with the parents and the community better on their terms and in the way that they need it. And I think it's so important that we do that. Um, also the same with communication, making sure that it's not in emails. I mean, I just had this conversation with um, my district talking about how to outreach to, to students that have um, our EL students and what can we do? And um, it's just, uh, it has to be beyond just the regular emails and the newsletters, um, whether it's just not written. So I really appreciate their, their comments and, and what, they're, uh, what the DLAC is trying to tell us. Um, I, I, on a personal note, I have to say, I was, I entiendo más que lo hablo en español, y no me gusta hablando en español, pero entiendo todo. So I really enjoyed um, driving past my first school in East Los Angeles and listening to this presentation. It was kind of um, nostalgic for me um, just to hear everyone talking and, and the suggestions and where I first started teaching was, it was down here in East Los Angeles in, uh, the Ramona Gardens projects. And it's just incredible to just kind of hear you every, hear this presentation tonight and just drive past where I used to work and all the, the, the students that I worked with. Um, so anyway, sorry, I had to put that like nostalgic note in there, but, um, gracias a todos. I really, parents, you did a great job. I really appreciate every year this group coming and Dr. Showman um, coming here and presenting to us really concrete suggestions that we really need to implement. And so uh, hopefully I highlighted the ones that I really thought were critical and hopefully we can do something about that. So thank you very much. Thank you. I just, I have one, one quick question. Don't we, there was a mention about checking out laptops. Um, and I thought we checked out laptops almost routinely now uh, because of, uh, especially since the pandemic. Is that not the case? Especially since the pandemic. We checked them out to students, but this, this recommendation was to be able to check them out to families. No, oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And parents. No, no, okay. Well, I thought this was an excellent uh, this was an excellent report, and uh, very much appreciate it. So, this was an excellent report. Are are you getting feedback? I'm getting feedback. Yes, you are. <clears throat> I think we might have all been, yeah. I think it might be the connection because is it raining yet? I think we're better now. Uh, it may be coming from your end, Mr. Hanley, but I I, pre I think we appreciate, um, do we want to go on to the next item? Mr. Yeah, Hanley? I think we should move on to the next item, especially since it's about 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you. I think the next item is um, the uh, 2021 uh, Measure ONL Citizens Oversight and the uh, ONL Annual um, Audit, uh, Financial and Performance Audit. Mr. Hawkins. All right, thank you, President Hanley. Uh, unfortunately, um, Simon Mazzola, the chair of the uh, Citizens Oversight Committee, uh, uh, had, a, had another commitment later this evening and wasn't able to stay. He, he did get to stay for some of the earlier uh, things. And so you uh, will be well informed on other items. Um, but uh, uh, Simon Mazzola is the chair. Um, he's been the chair for the last uh, year and a half and we just really thank him for his service. Uh, so I'll do my best to try to uh, uh, do him uh, uh, do him proud. So, uh, Tonight, we have the uh, Measure O and L annual report from the Citizens Oversight Committee, uh, as well as the annual audit report. Uh, the audit report is a financial and performance audit. Uh, the changes uh, in this year's- Mr. Hawkins, I'm looking at, and there was like one public comment. There's one hand raised out there in, in the attendees. 
Is that a public comment from the last from the uh, last item? Uh, it, it must be. Would you like me to promote Ms. Garcia? Yes. Sorry, Mr. Hawkins. I wanted to. I didn't notice that before. The right thing to do. Uh, Ms. Garcia, when you're ready. Uh, perhaps um, we have her stay on um, and uh, and then if she um, comes, we go back to it, but maybe we proceed okay. with Mr. Hawkins. Yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, so the big change uh, in the uh, committee, the Citizens Oversight Committee for the two bonds this year was that uh, last year was the completion of the Measure O uh, audits and annual, I mean, sorry, Measure M uh, audits and annual report as Measure M is completely um, spent uh, as of June 30th, 2020. Uh, and the other big change was the addition of Measure L to the committee, as uh, the board obviously knows. In March of 2020, the citizens of the district uh, approved the $385 million Measure L uh, Prop 39 bond. Uh, and so this will be the first year of the annual report for Measure L. So in terms of the financial and performance audit, uh, the, both audits are required uh, by the bond language uh, in Measures O and L and by Prop 39, which they both are, which are, uh, sorry, 55% bonds. Uh, the audits were presented uh, to the Citizens Oversight Committee uh, by uh, James Marta and company, the same auditors uh, who audit the uh, entire school district. Um, uh, we received unmodified opinions on, uh, on both audits, which is the best opinion that you can get similar to our district-wide audit. Um, and the best thing was there were no findings on either the financial uh, or the performance um, audit. In terms of the Citizens Oversight Committee's annual report, Again, this is required uh, by the language of Measure O and Measure L and by Proposition 39, which is uh, allows for the 55% uh, election, which they were approved on. Uh, it is required annually, and it's a big portion of what the committee does. Uh, the largest thing that uh, the annual report does uh, is make a finding that the expenditures in the projects uh, in both bonds are in accordance with the measure O and measure L uh, language. And the committee uh, found that both of those were in fact correct, that all projects and expenditures were appropriate and within the measure O and L bond language. Quick update on the committee's activities. The committee meets uh, at least quarterly. Um, they do site and project uh, uh, inspections and tours. Uh, they get financial updates and project updates at each meeting. Um, and this year, because we had several new members, uh, we had a COC training and Brown Act training uh, by our bond council um, at Stradling. Uh, the other thing that the uh, committee wanted to do was thank the board uh, for implementing the last of the three major recommendations they've had over the, uh, the last few years and that is approving the transite encapsulation projects at Hillsdale, Mills, and Aragon High School. Uh, that was the third uh, of their recommendations. Uh, the other ones were uh, having a deferred maintenance fund to take care of the property that was, or the, the buildings that were uh, built by the bonds, as well as having adequate maintenance and operations staffing uh, to uh, maintain those buildings. The last uh, thing that they wanted to note was they wanted to thank their new members, Erica Lyons, Wanda Horton, Neil Kaufman, and Michael Kennedy uh, for joining the committee uh, and being such a, a wonderful addition to the committee. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have uh, about the reports uh, or the audit report. Are there any questions from the board? I thought it was, I thought it was very, very complete. Very thorough. Um, I appreciate the work. 
having served on that committee representing the board uh, a number of years myself it's uh, yeah. not 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 easy work sometimes so i very much appreciate the effort that goes into it so i don't think uh, I, think I don't think it requires any vote it doesn't require us to to formally accept it right i think bob wanted to say something well, you know, I just wanted to recognize I was at the last COC meeting, and I think Lydia may have been there too. Um, but you know, it is hard work, and I, but I was going to question whether you needed a motion or not. So, I I don't think I don't think it's uh, required. I didn't see an approve. Um, uh, well, yeah, the board doesn't need to approve it. It can no. choose to accept it, but it doesn't is not required. To. It's just for information. So I think we can move to uh, Division of Human Resources, um, approval of personnel action. Yes, we have personnel actions and addendum for approval tonight. And we have three appointments and seven retirements or resignations to share. The first appointment is uh, upon board approval is Jose Gomez. Our current assistant principal at Mills High School will be our new principal at Cappuccino High School starting next year. Joining the district will be Gary Hong, who will be a new assistant principal at San Mateo High School. And Amy Malcolm will also be joining the district as a new assistant, assistant principal at Burlingame High School. Uh, for retirements and resignations, we have Hope Price, an English teacher at Mills, is retiring mm -hmm. effective uh, April 1st, I mean April 4th, after 31 years in the district. Billy Dacom, our facility manager at Hillsdale High School, will be resigning effective June 1st after 13 years and two months in the district. Liliana Peterson, the county technician at the district office is retiring effective April 15th. And she's been with the district for 10 years and five months. Diane Nostraza, nutrition services lead at Cappuccino submitted her retirement effective uh, May 26th. And she's been with the district for 20 years and eight months. Uh, Susan Silva, payroll technician at the district office, submitted her resignation at the end of the day. Um, I'm sorry, her retirement at the end of April, the day April 8th, after 10 years in the district. Christine Howie Crockett, a English teacher at Hillsville High School, has submitted her retirement effective May 27th, after 28 years in the district. And Kevin Goyer, program specialist at the district office, has submitted his uh, resignation effective June 30th, and he's been with the district for 11 years. Wow. That's a lot. I just wanted to uh, recognize that uh, Paul Belzer is uh, asked for, for a leave of absence and to address some personal and family issues. And I just wanted to thank, thank him and appreciate his service to the district. And um would be glad to welcome him back uh, <laughs> after uh after a year um but i know i've uh, i've known him uh, as long as i've been on the board so and that's a long time but um uh i know uh the the quality of work that he's done for the district and um uh, and appreciate his service to the district thank you uh, Trustee I, I second. I second everything that Peter said, and um, I look forward to Paul joining us again after he has his um, unpaid sabbatical. So, is there a motion to uh, approve the personnel uh, actions? So moved. Um, I had oh. my hand up. No, <laughs> Trustee Len. Oh. So sorry. I just wanted to say the exact same thing that both of you did um, about Paul and all his great work at Bur in Burlingame and I know Mills where I first met him um, so I wanted to say that and I also uh, I wanted a shout out to Simon Mazzola, Mazzola as well who's a I'm so glad he he's been part of the the committee thank you now we can go back to uh a motion to approve the personnel action? I already made it. Oh, okay. I'll okay. second it. 
Okay, so a uh, motion by uh, Trustee Dwyer, a second by Trustee Griffin. Uh, Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Uh, Trustee Land? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. And I vote yes also. Trustee Hanley, uh, Ms. Garcia is back, it seemed like. Should we oh, see yeah. if she wanted to speak or? Uh, Ms. Garcia, we, we missed you. You had your hand up uh, uh, to make a public comment and I did not see it. Uh, if you would like to make a public comment, we would be glad to receive it. Hola, buenas noches. Oh, nada más este, quería hacer un comentario sobre um, lo que nuestros compañeros de del comité dijeron. Eh, si me pueden traducir, por favor. Sí, yo le puedo traducir. Okay. Um, she is um, wanting to communicate some things that the group had spoken about um, in the previous presentation. Uh -huh. Ah, soy madre de este que representa a la comunidad de la escuela de Hisdale High School. Um, she's a mom from Hillsdale High School. She her children attend Hillsdale High School. Y pues agradecerle a ustedes por este siempre estar presente para nosotros y este uno de los motivos que nos ha llevado a seguir adelante es que hemos logrado que más padres se unan a nuestra comunidad de de latinos en la escuela y eso ha sido muy importante para nosotros. Um, she was saying thank you for always having um, the community in mind. Um, muchas gracias. And um, also that um, she definitely is going to continue to advocate to more parents to join um, the different parent groups. Mm -hmm. En tres años y medio que llevo en DILAC, este, hemos logrado reunir hasta 73 padres en una sola reunión y eso ha sido un logro muy importante para nosotros y gracias al grupo que tenemos, eh, que nos hemos organizado en enviar mensajes, tener atenciones para los padres para que estén con nosotros y eso ha sido muy importante. Um, over the past, uh, perdón, en un año han podido tener 73 padres de familia o? Sí, hemos tenido okay. más, sí. Um, this, within this school year, they've been able, to, been able to recruit 73 parents. And, um, perdón, dijo de los padres de familia y después um, dijo también otra cosa, no, sé, no me recuerdo, perdón. Um, dijo que habían podido lograr uh, entrar a más padres. Sí. Oh, and also, perdón, se me recuerdo. And also it's because of the, um, all of the constant communications that there's been, that people have been being informed. Y esperando que este, yo este año, pues, graduó a mi último hijo y espero mm -hmm. seguir el próximo año, pero si no es así, quiero incentivar a las compañeros que sigan trabajando por his del High School. She said that this year, her, her one of her children, I think the last will be graduating, but she is still going to stay on, hopefully, to help out. Um, and that she, you know, welcomes all of the parents that can join um, ELAC and the parent groups to do so. Y pues gracias por esta oportunidad que me han dado durante este tiempo en compartir con ustedes como representantes de nuestras escuelas y maestros de nuestros hijos. Es un placer para mí servirles a ustedes también. Muchas gracias. Um, she said that thank you so much for allowing her to speak and thank, uh, thank the board for being the representatives of our children and of our district and um, that, you know, she's very grateful for this time to be able to um, to serve the board as well. Muchas gracias, señora. Gracias a ustedes. Thank you for your comments. Okay, I think we are on to uh, O2, the adoption of the declaration of need for uh, fully qualified educators. Yes, this is an annual requirement um, for the cases where dis the district's unable to recruit a fully credentialed teacher. Um, we have the uh, numbers of seven emergency permits for CLAD English learner authorization and five for resource specialists uh, in case we need to go that route. 
Any questions? If not, uh, a motion to approve. Option. In. Who made the second? I heard Bob made the motion. I think right. Greg. Okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. Okay. Okay. Um, motion from Trustee Griffin, uh, second from uh, Trustee uh, Land. Uh, Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga. Yes. Uh, Trustee Land. You're muted. Yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, Trustee Dwyer. Yes. And I vote yes. So that is approved by nothing. Um, review, discuss, and approve the job description for the new position of behavior program manager. Yes, we have a need for behavior management uh, job duties. Currently, we are contracting out for many of these services. The approval of this job description and our recruitment will allow the district to have more hours of this type of service for approximately the same amount of what we are paying now through contracting out. Uh, these in, the job duties include uh, developing interventions and behavior plans and contracts, functional behavior assessments and intervention plans. Uh, the, the, pro, the manager will initiate programs and services for students with behavioral and emotional issues. They'll coordinate and work with the school teams to address student needs with responsive behavior plans. Uh, they'll also conduct workshops, trainings and service presentations and a, a list of other uh, essential functions. The proposed salary level is level one of the administrator management salary schedule and uh, it's comparable to other positions in the Bay Area as on the attachment and to positions in our, our own school district. Question. Trustee Dwyer. I have a couple questions. One, on, it, on the on the job description, it says that they need to have a license as certification as a board certified behavior analyst, but there's no college education required or no bachelor's, no master's, nothing like that. It's only a certification. Yes, we could add think there'd uh, be at least a bachelor's was, degree. Yeah, to get that, you need a bachelor's degree. We can add that to the job description. Yeah, certainly. I think, I, yeah, I, I would think that would make more sense. And the other piece is when I looked at the salary schedule, um, the contractor, uh, our, our people get benefits plus salary. So the contract, I don't think it's an apples and apples situation if you're looking at what we pay a contract and what we pay our own people because you have to add the benefits to our salary. And then I'm looking at Sequoia and Fremont and the, I don't, why are we starting them so much higher than all of the other districts that you're comparing it to. I mean, 126, the others are 77, 82, 70, and 110, and we're starting at 126. It seems too high when you yeah, add we benefits were, to that. Yeah, so when we, we, did, we did look at that, but when we were looking more, people uh, you know, usually come in at the, the higher levels. If, if you look at the higher levels, it ends in the same area as our psychologists and the other positions. Our level in our management salary does start off higher at the beginning. Okay. I mean, it just seems it doesn't give anyone, it doesn't give the person a big range to go. I mean, the other, the other districts, they can grow and, you know, get higher salary and higher salary with us. The gap is, is not as much. Um, I, yeah, I, I just want to make sure they have the, have education, not just a certificate. We're going to pay this oh. kind of rate. Uh, sure, sure. And you know. what's on the, the other that's not listed is that all of those other jobs are management positions. Oh, well, it said similar. I'm just going by what it says, similar positions. Similar so, job duties, yeah, but they're not all in the management. Well, okay. Yeah. So is only the Fremont manager then, maybe? Because the others aren't. I mean, there's a big jump between 70 and 126. And 82, 77, and 126. So there's got to be right. some. 
Yeah, we've we've had um, this. I, I think you've seen this item before because we tried to create a job description that would uh, attract uh, somebody and, and avoid having a contract or do right. this work. And we've been unsuccessful um, to date. So this is our latest um, iteration, iteration. Okay. On, on this. Um, so I, I'm hoping that uh, that we can solve it. I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, if we can't find someone, I'm not sure how these other districts are finding folks at, at $70,000, um, so. Well, when you add benefits to this, we're looking at it like 160, I mean, yeah. or 150 something. I mean, it you know it becomes highly compensated very quickly. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just wanna make sure the person we, we, if we hire someone, they're very qualified and have the education necessary to get the yeah. certificate. And, and they have to manage other people. So it's an important right. position that- Yeah, a master's that having, would be yeah. lovely. Yeah. on top of that bachelor's if they're yeah. going to do management and more than two, maybe more than two years experience. It, th that's a minimum that we have at this point. Okay. Um, two is not a lot. No, it isn't. Um, we're big. And, and we haven't been able to get anybody yeah. put this. Okay. So, um, Dr. Well, I, just, I just want to mention that the BCBA is a graduate level degree. So, I think just adding that it requires both a college degree and then this is a graduate level degree. Like you have to have a four years yeah. of college in order to get yeah. it. Yeah, that would be wonderful because then that then that 126 <clears throat> makes more sense, Julia. I agree with you. Okay, that's all I had. Thanks. Okay, and our DEI consultant does um, does guide us to have less years and le less um, uh, qualifications that would that may weed out diverse candidates. So we try not to have too many like minimum years of experience because uh, you know people get into the management, um, in the diversified management uh, tend to be new with less newer with lesser experience than the you know non diverse candidates. Well, there's always a when you know sometimes experience makes a big difference. So, right, I know. Uh, you know, we need to we have to go for the best candidate particularly since we can't get any. Okay, thank you. We okay. need to make a motion on this. Yes, we need a, we need a motion to approve this. Can I, uh, can I approve it as amended? Make a motion to approve it as amended to add the education qualifications? Yes. Okay, I move to approve this item um, as amended to include education qualifications. Okay. okay, we have a motion uh, to approve with, with amendments from uh, Trustee Dwyer and a second from Trustee Griffin. Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Uh, Trustee Land? Where is Trustee Land? Oh, no. We he can find his way back. Let's vote without him. Okay. Uh, Trustee Dwyer. Yes. And I vote yes. So that's approved for nothing. Um, with Trustee Land somewhere in the <laughs> in the countryside. Um, oh four. I move uh, approval for the partnership agreement with Latinos for Education. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> I read that. I read all of them. Okay. Okay. We have a. Did, did anyone else want to make any questions, comments? Okay. Uh, we have a motion from uh, Trustee Dwyer, second from Trustee Zuniga. Uh, Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Uh, Trustee Dwyer? Yes. And I vote yes, that's approved uh, for nothing. I move that we approve Kirk Black to represent Smudged at, on the Advisory Council for the Transformative Leadership and Disruptive Time Certificate Program at Cal State East Bay Continuing Education as contained in the attachment. Second. <laughs> okay, motion from uh, Trustee Dwyer, a second from Trustee Griffin. Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. I vote yes. That's approved for nothing. 
I think this is a great opportunity for you, Kirk. So I'm excited for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really good for you. So uh, it's just some disruptive times. 06, approve the revised job description for a district professional learning coordinator position. This this was the this is a revised position that was um, uh, performed by Savvy Hopkins before the district was approved for the teacher induction program. Uh, and since it was open, we took the opportunity to revise it to bring it up to date to include duties uh, related to MTSS and professional learning communities, uh, student assessment, and new teacher support. Fine with it. Second. Is that a, is it, was that well, a I guess motion? that was a motion. I said, I it. <laughs> motion? <laughs> it was a subtle motion. <laughs> okay. 1026. <laughs> okay, we have a motion, uh, motion from Trustee Dwyer, a second from Trustee Zuniga. <laughs> Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? I guess, and after spending so much time with y'all, you know, you start to get to know some some motions. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Trustee Dwyer. Yes. And I vote yes. So that's approved for nothing. So we are on to Division of Instructional Services, uh, the 2126 A to G Completion Improvement Grant Plan. All right. There is a extremely short presentation for this. Um, as Thank required, you. we are supposed to bring a plan forward for discussion at a board meeting. So we're gonna discuss it tonight. And then on May 5th, it will be coming forward for approval. And I'm gonna pass it off to Mr. Simmons. I think he's still awake. <laughs> it looks like he just got up. <laughs> <laughs> Did I wake you up? Okay, he can to present on the AGG Completion Improvement Grant. So just what everyone wants me to do is break out a slide deck right now. So um, let me quickly just say that, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll be providing a brief summary of our current plan to leverage these new resources from the state. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is just a quick slide that summarizes uh, the state's allocating $547.5 million for this grant. Our district is receiving a portion of both the access and success grants. They sort of broken up into three separate pots. Uh, our current rate, um, just, oh, sorry, we get about $2 million of this money as indicated on the grant. Uh, our current rate of A to G completion, as you can see on the slide there is about 64%. And so the intention is that these resources will be used to support that, the students who are not meeting that requirement. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide slum summarizes the basic investments we plan to make, uh, mainly continuing to support initiatives started during COVID in many ways. Well, things we started probably previous to that, but have been, been supported in, in, um, with, our, with the new COVID sort of resources over the last couple of, the last year and a half. Uh, it should be noted as, as, as in the actual grant plan document, we currently have about 22,070 students in grades nine through 11 who are currently not meeting the A to G requirements. Uh, and these resources will be targeted at the needs of those students across these various uh, investments. I think the one thing I would just quickly call out is that was re referenced earlier in the DLAC presentation actually is kind of, is, is really shoring up our school counseling um, crew across the district. Um, I was recently reminded that we have a significantly uh, new set of school counselors in the district. They may not be new school, new school counselors, but new to the district. Uh, about 70% of them uh, are within the first five years of school counseling. So we plan to do some investment on supporting their, their work um, alongside their counterparts in college and career advising at all, all of our campuses. Um, with that, uh, next slide. I'm happy to answer any questions or feedback. I mean, maybe, maybe some of it could be done. We could consider some of the innovative things like the evening access to counselors. Could this, could this money be used to support something like that? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when when I I mean when I looked at the plan, the plan looked like it was a little bit skimpy as to details, as to how we're going to actually do this. Does the thing that you're bringing back to us on the fifth have more details, or is there something that has more details about exactly what we're doing with with it's? You said we're likely to get two million dollars out of this. Yes. 
Uh, I mean, the current plan is to really, I mean, to, to soft land some of the, the heavy investments we've made during COVID to support a lot of school student success coordinators, which are, a, which we call a tier two um, intervention coordinator at every school site. So there's some, there's some heavy investments we've, we've already established. And that's why you'll actually see a lot of coherence with this grant and the previous, the expanded learning opportunities grant and the ESSER three grants, the, an ESSER two grant, an ESSER one grant, which we've received previously, because we're really trying to kind of stay the course on things that we put in place during, during COVID um, that we think are going to need, continue to need, be needs that we're addressing. So I think, yeah, that's the, that's why it's actually relatively thin, if you, as you say, because it's really an extension of what we've already articulated pretty extensively in previous uh, plans, not the least of which is the LCAP. Trustee Dwyer. I, I think some of the some of the items brought up in the DLAC presentation, if, if you could just kind of cross-reference those with the plan descriptions, particularly one that they said about communication and how um, not everyone does email or, uh, you know, is attentive to that kind of method. And, I, you know, the U.S. Post Office is still in business, um, although our mail didn't come to about 930 tonight. But, um, I, you know, if we can send letters home to parents in their language um, so they know that their child is behind, um, you know, so that we can engage them uh, to help get some of these kids on track. I, I think that might be so, that's something they asked for. And it makes sense to me, um, in addition to the evening counseling and that sort of thing. But I, 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 there's different things they asked for. I'd ask that you take a look at those to see how they would fit within the structure. Great. We'll do. So we'll okay. take those suggestions and then it will come back to you on May 5th for approval. That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Brian. You're the quickest. <sighs> So um, we are on to P2, review, discuss, and approve the job description for the new position of district long-term English learner coordinator teacher on special assignment. So we're requesting this, as you saw at our last board meeting, we've had a uptick in the number of English learners we're serving. And as part of that, we want a, a coordinator, a point four release coordinator to support our long-term English learners. We just have one revision to the job description, it is not gonna come with a stipend. So it's um, a, a plus five um, days, but it, it doesn't have a stipend. So we're gonna present it with that revision. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that. Yeah, it's That's a mistake. So we're not, we'll revise and post without that stipend down there. Okay, okay. I guess I have one question. Yes, go Do you ahead. think this is enough? I mean, I you know, I'm, I'm Hearing the adult school say they've got four, 400 adults signed up for EL. So, I mean, you know, um, do you think this is enough? I think it's a start. And I think some of the restructure that we're doing in the instruction department will help um, rally some support around this person as well. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I think it will also depend on the, the numbers that we see next year. So this year was an you know, it was unprecedented yeah. the number of students that we welcome. So we did this in anticipation of being able to support students with a specific lens on our long-term English learners. Cause I think we are spending so much time on our newcomers mm -hmm. who we want to be able to serve, but some of our right. students that have been in the system for many years, this, this position we hope will focus on and start integrating um, some of the literacy strategies that we know yeah. will support the students. So I think it's, it's our first, um, we feel like it's enough for right now. So I think if more needs come up, Dr. Shulman will, I'm certainly will let us know. It's a good, very good beginning, right? As we look at it, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. sorry, I also echo uh, Trustee Dwyer, it worries sometimes about the cost of living here, you know, and sustaining these positions and not, um, you know, forcing people to leave in that sense. You know, not that we're doing it, but, you know, if they're not getting paid enough, then they're going to go somewhere else. Um, but if you've had the conversation with Dr. Shulman and she's, you know, comfortable with this, then I trust, I trust, you know, both of your judgment. And Yes, okay. this is a proposal based on um, some of the things that she thought was needed. So just to clarify, this is us probably seeking one of our current employees to right. be at least point four in order to support at the classroom level with, and um, incorporating strategies for long-term English learners, so. 
I move approval. I'll second. Okay. I I just think it it's also important to to really measure progress in in, in a position like this too. I you know I think we need to establish some some real objectives for for this position to show that that we're making progress because we're just you know we're struggling with with LTELs in particular. Um, and I and I think you know if we're going to set this up as a TOSA, uh, you know I think we've got to have some firm idea of you know what what are we doing, what are we trying to achieve, and and are we making progress towards that? Um, I just think we otherwise otherwise it can just kind of be out there doing stuff, but but we're not <laughs> sure whether that stuff is really. Um, you know, making the making the kind of progress that that you know shows up in in academic outcomes. So I would say the metric that is closely aligned with it is how you know how many long term English learners we have, and it is one of the ones that is in our yeah. LCAP. So yeah. certainly that will be one that we're looking at, and the redesignation of the that group of students as we welcome them to the district. Yeah. So. Looking at our academic language development classes, this position will work closely with them, but totally agree. This They will be very focused on this group of students and we haven't had a position like this before. So I think it will be very helpful Good. for having um, a, a coordinator look specifically at long-term English learners because it's been an issue for a long time. And we know yeah. our partner districts also struggle. That's why we end up with long-term English learners here. Yeah. But I think if we're going to set this up, we should be really thinking, you know, how do we make a breakthrough in in uh, in serving this this group? Because, I mean, a lot, almost everybody's struggling with this group. Yes. Um, and that's, why, that's, that's why we need to look at the position as to make to consider, will it be enough? And yeah. will we need another step? Because it, it could it done well. It's going to take a lot of time. Yeah. And energy, and okay. energy is not hot. Okay, so, so we I'm have a uh, motion from uh, Trustee Dwyer and a yeah. second from Trustee Zuniga. Um, Trustee Griffin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zuniga? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. And I vote yes, so that's approved for nothing. And uh, believe it or not, I think we're towards the end here. Um, review and discuss the specific board policies and administrative regulations from March 2022, uh, part one. And I didn't have, I didn't have anything much to add that looked much like statutory stuff yeah. to me. Do we want to just put it on consent next time? It's fine. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Is is Laura still around? Yeah. So I want to I want to bring up just um, several uh, topics that uh, have come up um, to discuss. One is um, I know that uh, Miss uh, Andrade Zuniga. You and Mr. Land met to discuss uh, student board reps. Um, I think it's important that we try to uh, to reconstitute this um, topic. And I believe um, you and Ms. Kempke and Ms. Chalkley and Mr. Land are going to meet. And so I think we'd like to put that on the agenda at an upcoming meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so that that's uh, that's an important piece. The other piece, uh, Ms. Uh, Andrade Zuniga, you, you and I discussed um, the, um, uh, the Equity Advisory Committee and the possibility of, of your serving on that. Um, you know, typically the board has um, a, you know, at the beginning of the year, they, there's some committee assignments. And so I think our discussion was, um, you know, how the board felt about uh you're assuming that role or how, what a process might be. Is that, is that a fair summary, Ms. Andres Zuniga? Yeah, we, we touched on that. And um, yeah, I don't think we 
I don't think it was added to the list of different committees, though, that we all serve on, right? Right, right, right. We typically do committees at one point. I, I'm, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not sure where, I think it should be discussed here. Um, so is the discussion whether we're going to add that committee? Whether I should serve on it or not. Well, no, but we would, that we would have to add it to our list first and then. We'd have to add it to the list of committees, of committees. on which board right. members serve. Okay. Then, yes. So right. should, should we wait for this for the following year or how, what is that process like to add, you know, other committees onto the list? I don't think we've ever done it. I don't think it really matters. I mean, is there a meeting coming up that you're particularly interested in? Um, not in particular. I just wanted to see before, um, you know, I was able to, to participate. And it's, you know, mostly to listen and see, you know, how things are going and if there's, you know, stuff I can bring back to the board. So could we just add it? Could we then, when we do, when we do our committees, can we just add it at that time, agree that we're going to add it? And then when the committee assignments are made, that would take place then? Because isn't that coming up anyway for the next school year? Yes. yes. So we could add it when we when we do the next school year's assignments. And then yes. Ligia could serve in on it. I mean, and I don't know. I don't know how many meetings they have left. Julia, how many meetings? One. There is just one last meeting for this year. She can still go. I mean, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> you know. That's fine. But okay. we could add. I mean, let's add. Let's talk about adding it and do it when we have our when we set up committees. Sounds good. Okay. the The last issue um, that we'd like to bring to discuss is. Um, on um, May 5th, we, or if you remember uh, in the first semester, we had a, uh, um, a student, um, we brought in some students to uh, share with the board how the year was going, various mm -hmm. issues they had. And we haven't yet had a chance to do the second uh, of those. We sort of committed to having two a year. Um, we have, uh, um, what's it called, um, Julia, you, you, the the YCLL, and I don't know what the initials um, stand for. Youth Catalyst Liberatory Leadership. So it could be a group of students that we draw from, but it doesn't have to be. It would just be a group of students that has gone through some training this year. I would also suggest maybe there would be some students from our Advancing Ethnic Studies classes that might be good to hear from if we wanna just, we're just looking for students from each one of our schools. So, so there's two parts. One is the composition of the students and drawing from this uh, this uh, group of students. The second is having this uh, as a study session prior to the board meeting um, in one of our main meetings. Are you well, asking our opinions? Well, yes. yes. Okay. Well, you I, should... I mean, I think it's a good idea. I'm just concerned that May is a kind of a pressure cooker month for kids. Um, and the kids you want are going to be the kids who are going to be more, most in the pressure cooker working on AP and all their tests and all the stuff that happens in May. So, um, I, you know, I, I just want to make sure that students would be willing to participate. Well, maybe we, maybe we talked to Ms. Kemke about to, to, recruit some students, it may well be that June is a better month to do it. And if you remember, some of our board meetings are fairly <laughs> short. And then may, you may also be able to bring in the uh, the next superintendent to hear the conversation. It would be good to hear the end of school. I mean, it really would. So however we can do that to okay. you know hear about their experience this past year. And could we get the same kids we had before? Or is that just to... The students that we had before, um, I do still, you know, I have them in a spreadsheet and I ask them, you know, right after the study session, if they wanted to participate again. And I think one or two said they would be interested. So, oh, um, okay. I, it, it would seem, it would be interesting to get their, you know, the end of the year perspective of that. Mm -hmm. But, okay. Do you, I guess in that sense, is it, do you think it would matter the month? 
that we do it in. Um, you know, May versus June. And it, I mean, it is tough with the, you know, everything well, going on, but. I, you know, I think you, you've got to look at it, Kevin, when, you know, we've got a relatively light closed session too, because, um, you know, we're at, we're at quarter of 11 and that's not generally a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a closed session this time, but let, let, let me bring it back. Um, we have uh, some discussion that we can have on Monday on this on this topic, and, and we'll bring a recommendation because uh, we'll have uh, agenda setting on Thursday. Maybe you can also check the student interest before we. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll try to get it. Yeah. We'll try to get that together before yeah. that meeting. Okay. And I think that's it, right? That's all I have to. Ten forty six. Ten forty six. You want to go for ten fifty, or should we just like wrap her up? I think we should close the meeting before we get uh, the meeting goes feral. Um, too, too, feral. too late. Did you say feral? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll close. Anyway, I'm going to adjourn the meeting.